Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 82. This episode is with Emmy-nominated makeup artist Tom McInerney. And when I tell you Tom is a good time, oh boy, you guys are not ready. The first, like, I'd say the first 20 minutes, I'm like crying laughing. This was so much fun. Tom is great. Tom is so much fun and equally talented. Like I said, Emmy-nominated. But Tom, you'll know his work from uh, Vikings. He's like the head of the makeup uh, section over there, and man, did he kill it this season and every season, really. Uh, but we, so we talk about that. We talk about Vikings. We talk about um, how he first got into makeup, where that interest started, and it is very different from uh, from what you hear from most people. Um, and it's great. It's so good. Uh, and then we talk about different shenanigans that uh, goes on on the set of Vikings that may or may not include a few uh, Travis Fimmel stories. Um, so that was. Awesome. And then, come to find out, he worked on Star Wars. What? I didn't know any of that beforehand. Um, It just, it was great. And we we break down, like, how the, how the beards are held on in Vikings, how he does the tattoos, how he does the blood. Like, it's really, really cool. And he has one of the most inspiring stories as far as, like, perseverance and going for your dream and giving it your all and then seeing that come to fruition afterwards. Um, It was just great. It was great. Tom's great. Really, really fun. So uh, I'm gonna stop talking. Let's uh, let's get right to it. Please enjoy the interesting podcast, episode number 82, with Tom McInerney. Theme song time. Okay. <laughs> that, that's ha- that's half the battle of podcasting is scheduling, dude. No way. Cool. One time I had a guy. I was like, "All right, cool, let's do this." And nine months it took because we we scheduled it, and then he had to go like to another country to film a movie. And I was like, "All right, cool." And then that movie had to be reshot. And I was like, "Okay, so, you know, hey, whatever you need, I have all the patience in the world." <laughs> you know. <laughs> no way. No, wow. Well, you okay. know. That's that's well, that's great. the. I'm just glad that that it happens at all. You know. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I listened to a. I listened to some of your podcasts. I, I, I what? You know, uh, yeah. Well, I was trying to get the skinny on 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 um, uh, like what it was. It's a good idea. Um, I've, I've already, you did really good. I've only done one other podcast um, in my life, and really? I, I'm still kind of surprised. That, yeah, I was so sort of surprised as to you know why you wanted to talk to me, but but I'm yeah. flattered. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I have a weird brain yeah. where I watch things I, and I'm like, how did. How does that work? I need to find it out. I need to find it out. No. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I, you know, yeah. Well, c- great. Yeah. Um, I did. What did I do? I did. I did a podcast called Head Overy Heels. Oh, I love it. <laughs> head Head Overy Heels, and it, it was really interesting. And so far as I was the only guy that had ever been, you know. Hey, there you go interviewed which is all right yeah but uh, uh you're, you're you're my second podcast or so, um you know boom second's best anyway <laughs> guess... number two yeah. two is my favorite number so we're already off to a great start you know <laughs> <laughs> that's that's great though i i didn't realize you'd you'd listen to a show i always get really nervous about that i don't know why it makes sense if you're going to come on a show to listen to one to kind of know what you're getting into but i'm always well, surprised yeah like you don't like you you could be a psychopath and, and... <laughs> I'm not saying Make I'm not. Make me sound like a gibbering, <laughs> you know, turnip truck, shillelagh willing leprechaun yeah. or shillelagh wielding leprechaun, and 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 so, yeah. And also, <laughs> you know, sometimes I'm afraid that somebody's going to ask me really questions that they know the answers to, and I know the answers to as well. But I am, you know, bound to lie <laughs> for sure. yeah. the sake of the job, you know. Sure, sure. Uh, <laughs> Tell me that all so, of your secrets. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> it's that gotcha <laughs> podcasting you've heard so much about. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> my goodness. In my experience, you just find people that, like, one, you know a little bit about them, so there's a genuine interest. Because I feel, yeah. I feel like a lot of people, specifically with, like, this kind of medium, it's, uh, you know, I'm going to ask you a question and get an answer, and then I'm going to project that. I mean, I'm like, dude, I just want to talk to the people 
behind this stuff okay. as people, you know, just kind of <laughs> free flow and convo, you know. Yeah, that's okay. a good way to have it. So wh- where so are you too. based? I'm you're, in Florida. Based... I'm in Oof, yeah, I'm well. in Florida. It's a it's a bit of ways, you know, different climate than Ireland. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. I do have to that's say though, great. I went to Ireland for the first time uh, mm. two years ago, and yeah. man, it's my favorite place in the world. No, come on, stop, I'm, stop. dude. I'm telling you this right now. So, here's another thing. So you know, a lot of people, specifically like Americans, uh, we have you know ancestors that came from across the pond. So we like to be like, oh, you know, I, I'm Irish as well. You know, I'm English and all these things. But it's like you know, maybe four, five, six generations back. You know, it's like my great, great, great grandmother was Irish. And when I went to Ireland, we did like the entire island in like a week and a half. So we like, we, <laughs> dude, it was nuts. You tore around the place. All of it. We, we did. We landed in Dublin at like yeah. seven o'clock in the morning. By 1130, we were drunk at the brewery. Because uh, obviously. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. And it says that right, yeah. Except, you know, it's like a rite of passage I hear. So it's like, you got to do this. Yes. Yes, it is. Yep. And uh, I planned it out, obviously, because I wanted to see as much as possible. And uh, one of the first stops we made was actually uh, the Wicklow Mountains. And we were there in June. So we actually saw a few of the Viking boats in the water and around the corner. So I was like, this is already the best. And, (laughs) dude, I just love it. Love it. Wow. So you, you went you you went up to um you went up to uh, the Sally Gap to yes. where we film in 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 Glendalough because you saw the Guinnesses the Guinnesses uh, place that's that's one of the most beautiful places in Dublin I, it's amazing that that spot you right know? and you're from there mm. <laughs> yes I am yeah yeah I'm as Irish as potatoes Dude, Dublin <laughs> that is amazing what is it like growing up in Dublin um it's okay I mean I, I'm. <laughs> 44 now i mean look it's better than it was sure dublin is a yeah i mean dublin's a great great town it's it's a fantastic place um it's uh, gosh how do you describe it properly i think in in the 80s when we, when i was a kid we were going through a recession mm-hmm. so dublin wasn't a fantastic place and i was out in the suburbs and if you can imagine before the internet and before uh you know uh, uh, mobile phones. Oh you yeah. know, Dublin was Dublin was was just emerging from a kind of a how do you describe it? A kind of a Catholic a, a, a oppressive regime that had lasted for for. I mean, we're still pretty much. It's they still have us, you know, by the nuts. But, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, we were just kind of getting out of it. We, you know, Steven Spielberg is making ET, and you know, uh, you know, Star Wars is taking a grip of the kind of popular culture. But like, you know, it was still, it was, it was, it was a nice place to grow up. It was kind of innocent in, in, to a certain extent. You know, we were just kind of emerging out into the European market as well, um, sure. uh, getting through the troubles up north, and right. um, that that being a real part of 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 our culture, and then embracing the 90s the kind of the the uh the irish tiger really kind of injected a lot of money and slingshot you know ireland into the onto the world stage so it was it was a really interesting place to grow up I, as a kid it was you know it was fine i, I had fond memories of traveling around the country oh I bet. you know when you know yeah but like it was got like some places it was it was like going back a hundred years in time yeah um, you know, it really was. I, I, it's funny. I re, I visited recently the the places, you know, way down in Kerry and way 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 down south, and I went way up north the places where I would travel to when I was a kid. And you know, while there is a certain element of the charm there, you know, so much of the so much of it's changed because the injection of money and the Irish Tiger and the the, the new economy has has I don't know modernized the charm. It's still there. There's elements that are still there, but you know, certainly. You know, growing up, I had really fond memories of. You know, I had memories of of that. Um, that well, what? How do you describe it? You know, it it wasn't like, like it wasn't quite like a a, a Norman Rockwellian version of America. Sure. You know, to, to Ireland, it was more like a a kind of a, you know, 
tea, drinking tea out of milk bottles, sort of the field <laughs> yeah. of, of, uh, you know, growing up, but it, it was, uh, you know, it was, it was a nice place. It was a really interesting time for me as, as, as a kid growing up, wanting to be a makeup artist was, it was, it was an, it was an odd thing to, to, uh, I felt like coming out of the closet. It was really, really weird. Yeah. Um, How did that even start? Well, it, there are many ways. That I, I, there's tons of stories. People ask me this, you know, quite a lot. And I've always got a, I depending bet. on who the audience is, I've always got a, the, 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 the right answer. But the, the real <laughs> truth of it is, is um, there was a, there was a TV show. Like I, we were, my, you know, I grew up in a sort of, um, in a, a kind of a middle class suburban estate. And, mm. you know, I was, there was loads of kids and I had some they were, we were all around the same age. I was really lucky, I suppose. And the the friends that I had, some, some were like really wealthy, were the, were the kids of really wealthy doctors. My my dad was an engineer. Not that we were we weren't wealthy, but we were we weren't um, we weren't rich like they were. The, my rich my sort of my rich middle class friends had exposure to um, much much more exposure to American you know subculture and, and sure. you know pop culture uh, than I did. And I and I remember as I as I was growing up, one of my closest friends, uh, we used to go watch videos in his gaff. Oh, uh, yeah. There was a school. There was a, div- a particular movie came out called Summer School. You know, and it was one of these things. I don't know if you ever remember it. It wasn't like Porky's Revenge, or it's in the same ilk of Porky's Revenge and that genre of 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 film that was popular around the 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 eighties. Yeah. And this thing was called Summer School. It was about kids in high school, and one of the, and that that didn't want to go to summer school. And one of the things they did was they would play pranks on their teachers, like going into the toilets and <laughs> you know, a penis would drop on the floor, or you know, some guy would come in and. You know, he'd do something and his, you know, his his head would explode. Or anyway, it just got worse and worse and worse. And the film just became this, you know, the 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 narrative just became this progressive uh, um, journey of blood and guts and and you know foam latex. Sure. Shit. That yeah. Destroyed the <laughs> entire school. And I just fell in love with that. And my friend said to me at the time that he wanted to get into making all that. You know. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I thought, oh, go okay, that's what I'm going to do. Perfect. <laughs> and I did, and I, I just stuck with it, you know. And and my dad encouraged me to, to 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 my dad found the avenue, if you like, that I thought would would follow. My friend kind of split away from that. He went into skateboarding and DJing, and I just stuck with it. And you know, my dad helped me take get a foothold and find a direction, if you like. And and that's how I kind of got into it. And then from like at its origins, I suppose the idea of creating something mischievous to trick people was what first attracted me to it oh that's cool yeah 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 so that's that's what that's what that's what i want that's what i i wanted the idea that you could you could go up and shake i mean it's a really simple you go up and shake somebody's hand your hand comes off and blood sprays everywhere you know <laughs> that's like you see somebody and they have a heart attack and it's like yeah you know that kind of stuff is like really that i i, I found that really fun and the idea of it really fun and then eventually you know i got into as i grew up my dad uh, uh, encouraged me to pursue, and again, I, I sort of, if you have paint a picture of Ireland at the time, you know, in the the uh, it was late eighties, early nineties. Like, if I can give you an idea, like uh, homosexuality or like you know, gay people, they only they only became legal in nineteen ninety eight or something bizarre. Right. Right. Uh, like they, really, up until really recently, it was illegal to be gay in this country. So, you know, and before that, to say that I wanted to pursue makeup as a career, it kind of, and, and I'm not gay, but that's neither here nor there, but to, to sort of, at a very young age, sure, to pursue that or to say that, it creates, um, uh, it, it can create certain prejudices, but my dad kind of embraced it and and said that, it could, look, this is the way it is. If you want to be a makeup artist, the pr- predominantly in this country, they're all men and, you know, well, they're all women. There's only, there's only one man. And he was, he was at the time he was sick. Uh, and I think he was actually dying of AIDS because it was, it was in around it. It was in around MTV when MTV was kicking off, you know, with, um, sure. when MTV was just starting. And so my dad said, look, if you pursue this, 
they'll remember you because you're a man and you're straight and there aren't anybody else. <laughs> you're right. Like, you stand you know? out um, already. So, yeah, 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 totally. And he also said then, which, which sort of, he goes, he said, you'll meet more women than, than any, any of your friends that's ever. True. <laughs> and, um, and so, you know, that's, that's how it all started. It was like, there was a couple of, was a series of events, you know, just playing pranks, uh, you know, wanting to be different. Um, and then, I suppose ultimately, you know, when it became apparent uh, about with the women, I just was with the, the women that you could meet. Because like when you're a kid, when you're a teenager, you know, right. between the like, eighteen onwards, the idea of meeting all these beautiful women it's true. It just changed the ball game. Yeah, <laughs> it's like the male cheerleader mentality. Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> smart, and, um, smart. Yeah, yeah, and 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 I was really lucky again. You know. There were many, many people that 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 I that I, I that questioned my motivation, you know. I bet. And Ireland, and yeah, and Ireland wasn't the place where, you know, the, at the time there wasn't too many thinking outside the box in terms of, you know, applying that to your day to day routine. So when you tell somebody in a cab, when you tell a cab driver, or when you tell when somebody asks you what they do and they work in a building site, and you say you're a makeup artist, the first port of call is like, you know. I know What's a guy. This guy Who is he? <laughs> yeah. You know? Um. So, and I was lucky that my friends, my my immediate friends, weren't that way, and my family wasn't that way, and they they supported me, and I and I, and I forged ahead, and and here I am now talking to you. Dude, <laughs> that's great. Yeah. I love that the pranks. Who else yeah. has a story like that? That's my favorite thing to learn about people like yourself that are really really good at what they do. I'm like, okay, what was the seed that started this tree? Because it can come from anything. And a lot of people, you know, around that time in the 80s, like Rick Baker, you know, people yeah. saw his type of stuff and was like, that's it. That's it right there. Like, I had a guy mm -hmm. on one time who ended up winning an Oscar later on for visual effects, and his mm -hmm. love started with seeing, like, the original King Kong. And just that yeah, right, kind of, well, like, yeah. moved it around. You're like, oh, it can literally come from anywhere. And yeah. Prince is amazing. <laughs> that's yeah, so good. it was. It was pranks. Yeah, it it, <laughs> it was. It, I just wanted to prank people, you know. Yeah. Until eventually, like, you know, I stopped because you know I got I got afraid of yeah. really scare, Where's can, the like, line? really scare people. Yeah. <laughs> what's, like, the, what's the I, best I, prank you ever pulled? Ah, uh, there was a kid. He was a real little bastard. Oh no. <laughs> oh, shooters. Yeah, he was a real little bastard. <laughs> Sorry, he, you know. I don't. I don't know about how, what your language policy is. I hope you beat oh, it good. or whatever. But, you're good. <laughs> but he, um, he, he was a real. He was. He was. He must have been about twelve or ten, <laughs> you know, from England. And he was just this cocky little kind of. I know it all. And he got into like, and I, I you know, I'm, as a makeup artist, yeah, like I didn't want to. I didn't want to hurt. I didn't want to. You never want to hurt anybody. You, <laughs> and, and I need him to trust me, you know, because he, he has to behave. So you have to, there's a point where you have to maintain a level of professionalism. And also you have to encourage the kid to be comfortable because you don't want to be afraid when he's in the seat. That's true. Because uh, you, you need him to do what he's going <laughs> to do. You don't want to also. traumatize him. <laughs> no, no. But, and, and I have a, I have, I'm quite good when I, I'm quite good with, with kids, you know, and eventually the kid and, and I just got, you know, really comfortable with each other. And, and this kid just started punching me in the nuts, <laughs> you know, like, and it just endless. Like I'd be walking on. around. Yeah. And he punched me square in the nuts. And, and then he was, he, he was, he wasn't, he wasn't big enough to do any real damage, but at the same time, you know, some of his, some of his, uh, some of his nuts, he really put some effort into, you know, <laughs> some of his nuts, you know, it's like, Jesus kid, I'm, if you, I'm going to, but it, anyway, so, uh, he, I, 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 you make it, we make these flat appliances and, and, and he was acting real tough, you know, he's a real tough little British, you know, uh, from the East end. And, and he got the part on tutors because I think he was a real cocky little fucker and sorry, sure. sorry, excuse my French, oh, no, you're good. but, it's, he, it's, he, it's but he, he, you know, so he, he got the part and, um, you know, so if you can imagine this little nipper, uh, that's a real mouthy little git and uh, <laughs> ultimately very charming uh, but oh, charming from a distance sure. if that makes sense he could turn it on but you know the truth yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah totally like he was a little Satan you know <laughs> um, and um, you know acting all tough and that was his main kind of premise he was a tough 
little kid that wasn't afraid to throw a dig and he, you know nothing could touch him nothing could harm him. so i had this little, <laughs> yeah yeah so i had this appliance and it was a, it was a flat transfer something you could put on very quickly it's one of these things that we've well they're not that we've but that has been developed recently in the last five to ten years and had to you know apply prosthetics quickly and what and and, and it was a it was a transfer a 3d transfer if you like so it was a flat appliance that can be a that can be stuck on really quickly mm-hmm. and uh you know you apply a little bit of blood it looks like you've been oh, eviscerated sweet. so he punched me in the nuts <laughs> you're like that uh, is it this, <laughs> yeah he punched me in the nuts and ran out and and i i i think i fell and something smashed oh no and uh i i i i put the oak on my hand i stuck it on my hand and I covered it in blood, and I held it in his And I started going, ah, screaming, you know. <laughs> and he ran back in, laughing at me. And uh, on the ground, I was like, oh, look what you did. And uh, I opened up my hand, and he looked, and he went, white. <laughs> like, white. Like, as if he was going to piss in his pants. And and, and uh, I looked at his face, and I, was, and, and I was screaming, going, oh, Jesus, Jesus. And he goes, Oh, don't! And he and he started to cry. Then he goes, "Oh, don't show it to me! I can't see it." There was tears everywhere. And then his he he ran out of the corridor. At that point, like I I just started to laugh. But then right. his his minder, the nanny came down, oh, and no. then the ads came in, oh. and you know it was like he was crying his eyes out, and I was rolling around the floor, and it looked like I was in pain, but I was laughing at him because right. he <laughs> actually started crying. I was like this tough little prick dancing around the punching him punching me in the nuts can't even stand the side of blood just crying like a little sissy in the corner <laughs> and i have to say it was the cruelest little prank i played and it was probably my the the the, the if 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 you were to examine it from an adult point of view <laughs> yeah. it was the most immature thing i could have done uh but it was the most satisfying thing i've ever done i just got this little guy i didn't touch him but it was like i got him crying like a little baby and uh it was beautiful. And I thought, mm. it's just one of those moments when you think, yeah, you little fucker, I got you. <laughs> yeah, <you're> like... <laughs> I mean, All those times, yeah. it only takes yeah. one to get him back. <laughs> yeah, for every punch in the nut, for every <laughs> time you had to go, I'm looking at you crying in the corner. Yeah. And then subsequently, like, you know, he, um, the ADs wouldn't let me do his makeup anymore. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to, uh... <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I didn't want to do his I didn't want to do his makeup because he was just so he was just so vile. I bet. Know? Oh my god! Yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember being funnier at the time, but you know, just in terms of pranks, yeah, I really enjoyed that. That's a good. <laughs> that's know? and that one pays dividends. <laughs> it does, yeah, yeah. It does. It does. It yields rewards. Yeah. In, in funny... oh but like god, Travis, so Travis was the same. Travis... I was just about to say that. I was like, pranks on set. That's like Travis Fimmel level. Yeah, yeah, no, he was a, he was, he's not, he's a whole other level. He's a whole other level. Uh, uh, you know, there's, 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 um, yeah, one of the first, oh, one of the first pranks he did, like, it's very serious when you get to set, you know, particularly on your first, you oh, know. yeah, you're nervous, a lot yeah, of people. Well, yeah, we, just, we, we were doing these, we doing these battle scenes, you know, and we had, everybody's like, you know, this is the Vikings, it's serious, there's big money. Um, and Travis is Travis is quite a big deal, you know. Yeah. And we're doing yeah. this. People are getting injured left, right, and center. You know, people are getting cracked in the head and and stuff with uh, swords. I bet. And 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 the director is this little guy s- screaming, you know, action, and everybody's tearing the arse out of it. And it's you know, and then all of a sudden, Travis Travis screams, "Oh my bloody finger!" <laughs> And he holds his hand like this, and there's blood everywhere. He could take in one of the things that we had peglers, and he'd spread it all over his hand. And then he held oh, up his thumb. Oh, that's good. He held up his thumb that we had made, and nobody knew. Nobody knew. He didn't tell the first AD. He didn't tell the director. He just he took just, it. Oh, he, just, <laughs> he just no. He I, I think I think he told me. I think he. I don't know. I don't know who he. He's just supposed to let the first AD know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All people you're supposed to let the first AD know. He didn't let anybody know. But he just told, and then the f- ambulance. With everybody, you know, everything stopped. The the director went white. The first AD went white. You know, the oh lead dude God. lost his thumb, and he stood there screaming his head off. And then he just started laughing like a son of a bitch. <laughs> you know, just about to change our underwear. We were like, oh, that's yeah. the end. We just we just taken out the lead. You know, this yeah. 
you know, handsome Australian bastard, you know, <laughs> we've, we've, we've killed our careers because we couldn't, uh, we couldn't stop some stupid ex from chopping his fucking thumb off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But like that, take, that's the kind of shit that he did. That was, that takes balls, oh, you know, that, man. that takes balls. There's yeah. no, <laughs> that's next level. <laughs> to yeah. And that's it. That, that was the start of it. You know, that was just the start of it. <laughs> that's the beginning. <laughs> mm-hmm. Travis is an Travis is an Travis is an expert um, expert marksman. Oh man! Uh, expert shot from a, <laughs> from, like, from from five hundred feet away. So he'd pick up a lump of horse shit you know, in in his hand. No sweat. <laughs> There's no line. What's that, what's there? There's no like pick up a lump of horse shit, and you'd see him. You'd know he was. You'd like, get a sense of it. It's just a look and in the eye. <laughs> Yeah, he's he's, in a, he's around somewhere. You know he is, and he's in costume. And this is the thing that, that Travis knew. He wouldn't do any of this shit when he wasn't when he was in his regular clothes. But when he was in when he was costume, every, the entire crew were in trouble. Right. But he, in the field, and there's horses everywhere. You pick up a hor- piece of horse shit, and if you didn't have your eye on him, I swear to God, <laughs> he could hit your head with pinpoint accuracy. If he worked for the military, it, the Taliban would have been in trouble. He, <laughs> Was an absolute crack shot with horse shit, and he could, he could make, sh- he just make a mess of you, uh, if you weren't, if you had to be on your toes all the time. There came a, it, there, there became a, a, a turn of phrase after I think year three, just to make <laughs> things Travis proof. You know, you couldn't leave anything down. You know, if you just, you couldn't put anything, it, it would either end up on fire, in the water. It would, uh, you know, you'd become a target because he'd set you up to go and get it. <laughs> if you don't want it, then you were a target. You know, and also if he picked on somebody with something, he could set you up in such a way that if he would pick a fight with, say, the sound guys, and the sound guys were another bunch of ace crack shot, pinpoint accurate. <laughs> they, they, could, they could target you from, they can fire around corners. They're that good. And, you know, Fimmel would line you up in the firing line and that'd be you finished. You know, you'd have to leave set or, you know, bring a change of clothes or, you know, he yeah. He's a, yeah. He's a, <laughs> he's a swine. Oh. I hope he burns in hell. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever get him? Never. Never once. <laughs> Never once. No, you couldn't. We tried to loads of times, but um, he's just, he's, I'm not, it's not that he's too good, but right. I think that he's Don't been doing it. Do- <laughs> yeah, he's been doing it for so long that he knows all the angles. He's just <laughs> we just couldn't get him. Oh. You know, production went so far as to get him as well. Production tried to get him with like fake scripts. Oh, they tried really? To get- yeah, they wrote a fake script to try and do a gay love scene. You know, <laughs> there were changes that come in, and he-, he knew that it was he knew it was bullshit. He, he could smell a rat from a mile away. Yeah, you know, <laughs> he's the professional. Yeah, you had to check. Oh, yeah, you had to check the doors. So when he walked in, that there was he put water on, on the doorway. And I had to get up there. He'd get up earlier than you. So if you walked in, you know, on a freezing cold, you know, February morning, you'd open the door and then just water would fucking drench you. You know. Uh, oh man, I hope you saved some of these for later on. Uh, well, I, I, I'm, if I ever meet him again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna make a list, uh, yeah. <laughs> a, a list of things that I can, I can, I can get him with because, uh, I mean, he's he set me on fire. He's nearly drowned me. Oh, no. He's, yeah, yeah. He destroyed my office. Like he's just he has he does not he won't hold back either. Oh you know? man, <laughs> you he's thought you thought charming. the kid was bad, but then no, you got yeah, Tra- no, yeah. <laughs> then Travis no, Tra- comes along Travis. and he smiles yeah. at you when you're done. You're like, ah, damn it, I can't even <laughs> be mad at you for this. Yeah, I know. It's funny. He's like he's like the schoolyard bully, except he's not a bully. <laughs> you know? Right, right. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, but uh, uh, apart from the the pranks and the life threatening danger, he's a really nice guy. <laughs> yeah. That's what I hear. That's what I hear. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. God. So when so, you're when you're tra- when you're doing this thing, I think it's really cool that your dad and your parents were like conducive to the dream. That's that's really cool, and I feel like it's kind of rare nowadays. <laughs> Yeah, that's neat. That's neat. Do you remember it, your first professional gig? Oh, do I? God, 
I feel Do like I remember? it was forever ago. Look back, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> my first professional gig. God, I don't. Um, I think my first professional gig. Yeah, I. I... Yes. <laughs> I remember it. Uh, and I don't know if it was semi-professional, but oh uh, God, I I had made. What had I done? I I, I was always making. Oh, I do remember my first my first first gig. Yes, it was. I used to, I, I went into th- I, I did theater. I went into the, the the Dublin Grand Opera Society and started doing theater. Ooh, I was trying to figure out an smart. avenue to apprentice, yeah. you know. So uh, and I was trying to f- work. I was apprenticing with other makeup artists, you know. So I went in that way and I did some. So I I I, I learned the ropes with uh, with another makeup artist on how to do theater and opera and. You know, uh, I did make a whole lot of money, but it, that I think was my first professional gig. I think it was my first professional gig. It's when you, personally, like, it's when you get it paid. Yeah, so I suppose. Yeah, like the first time, because you'd been doing it on your own for a while, kind of honing your technique. So when were you like, yeah. I'm a makeup artist now? Yeah, yeah, I guess after I left college, I think. And then I went to, I got a job with a, a makeup artist who needed an assistant with the opera society. So I went in there and, and that was, that was heavy, you know, because, you know, for a lot of reasons, opera is tough. And, yeah, oh yeah. um, you know, uh, it was in, in Dublin, the, you, the, the national theater is the Gaiety theater. And, and, sure. uh, there was lots of, the opera was a tradition that, uh, you know, invited lots of European, you know, big opera singers over to sing and being around those was, uh, you know, you had to be on your toes. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah. So, so uh, you didn't get, you know, you didn't find yourself in an awkward corner. <laughs> to <laughs> fight your <way>. yeah. <laughs> you know. Trial um, by fire. <laughs> yeah, definitely. 100%. So, yeah, that was my first uh, professional gig. And then from there, I, I kind of, well, and it was good because well, yeah, those gigs, things well, I think what what what's important, what I've learned over the years is that, and I it's one of these things that you have to you have to do anyway. But but I I learned that to put myself in 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 a stressful situation, I learned that I, you grow very very quickly oh, when for sure. the conditions that you work are tough, um, and that's what the opera did. You know, it, the conditions were tough, really really tough. Sure. So. Uh, I walked away if at the end of the whole thing with a lot of steel under, you know, under my belt. So, yeah, you know, that, that was, I mean, when I, when I think back and when I say it out loud, it doesn't sound that interesting, but it's you know, very interesting. I mean, that, that's why yeah. I have a show about it, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a I service I provide. I just kind of walk you through all the awesome stuff you've done. So uh, sure. you're welcome. The bill is in the mail. <laughs> that's that's pretty so you're you're doing and obviously i've been following you on instagram for a long time i'm just gonna say it and uh you you've got your amazing makeup stuff but you also like sculpt and stuff so when did yeah, you when yeah. did you, were you like i'm gonna try sculpting now oh no i've been sculpting since i was like really young so like really? you know the king kong story yeah 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 yeah, yeah. So when i saw the king kong story the 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 black and white one. Oh yeah and then the one that rick baker did in the 70s i wanted to to make i wanted to, to i wanted to make king kong so i i started to sculpt and i think king kong was my first sculpture oh what how cool is that yeah yeah it is yeah and, and that's that, that and from there like i guess there was a little part of me that wanted to be that sculpture you know i wanted to be that 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 the guy in the suit you yeah, know because i knew it was suit. and um so I've been sculpting since I was five or six, and oh, I, I, yeah, like I, I, I don't really post much of my sculpture up there because, uh, I mean, I have a lot of sculpture. This I will post soon, but consider this a like, formal request. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well, you know, yeah. I, the reason I, I guess I don't post is because you know Instagram is a funny place. Um, yes, it is. <laughs> uh, yeah, like it's everybody's work is up there, and everybody's work is so on point. And 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 Yourself you know, I, I, when I well, thank you very much. I'm flattered, <laughs> but um, you know, I, I sometimes I have shit days. You know, my work isn't always. 
like I fuck up all the time and I, I, I have a great bunch of people behind me that really support me, you know? Yeah. Um, and, the, and, and, and I suppose watch my ass. And, and the thing is when I look on Instagram at some of the stuff that's coming out, I think, God, I just want to quit and become a gas station attendant, you know, <laughs> I just feel like a fucking loser. I hear you. Um, but, uh, and so like putting the stuff up on putting the sculpture up, I guess I, I, because my career is where it is vikings is vikings is is it's it's coming back um right uh but it's not coming back to late in the year and and i know that that instagram is a place that you can use to generate income absolutely if that's you know if that's where where you, where you want to go with it mm-hmm. but also it's a place where you can put your work and people like you could see my work you're right um but also people like steven spielberg could see my work if you wanted to see who you're i was right. or somebody who check, could see my work. and to all intents and purposes my skill at the moment is about makeup and managing uh productions like i can manage makeup within a production and i can add value to a uh to uh a, a, a producer's project oh yeah by for sure fact of my where see like if i put up my sculpture which is all sort of goblins and orcs and 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 uh, devils and that's really you know, cool. that kind of stuff yeah, it is cool but i don't know like people you know, don't come to ireland for like lord of the rings that's you right. know? well I mean, yet they, they did. you know not, not yet <laughs> yeah not yet. but but i hear you and, and so so that's why i haven't put that much stuff up i've got lots of other stuff that i keep meaning to put up but again like with, with instagram it's one of these things you you know if you put up a photograph you have to credit everybody that did that that helped do the work, and I can't remember who did the work. Yeah, I hear. Uh, I, I I I do a huge amount of the the legwork, and I design everything, but I don't I don't you know everybody has contributed to in some way to 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 a lot of the stuff that I put up there. So there's a lot of the gags that I the the sculptures and stuff like that that the guys in the prosthetics department did that, that are part mine, but I don't put them up because I feel that they're not all mine. The only, the only things that I put up are the stuff that I've, that my hand has been the final, the final pass of what has gone on screen is what I call mine. So sure. I would say I, I, I collate the data, put it all together, make it look good and present it. And I would call that mine. So the, like the scars and stuff like that and the black eyes and the noses and the sculptures of the black eyes and noses, I wouldn't put that up there because I, I just tell the guys what I want. Um, right, right. It's a team effort you know, as opposed to like yeah, yeah, something yeah. you'd it's stand with. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, and also the sculpture that I do isn't Viking or is related. It's fantasy related. It's stuff that I dream about. The stuff that I, in a perfect world, if Rick Baker hadn't quit the business and there were still huge companies in the States, you yeah. know. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, of course, it would be the kind of thing that I would have pitched them and said, please give me a job. <laughs> right, or, <you> know, right. <laughs> or I, I have this, you know, dream of working for Ironhead Studios. Oh, good one. You know, yeah, like, I, 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 when I was, when I was 20, mm-hmm. when I was, yeah, 20, no, 20, no, I was 18, or, no, I was, I was 18, 17 or 18 or something like that. And I went over, I, I, I knew, a, I met a guy working on a sci-fi over here, space truckers. And I, and I, um, I, 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 I built a relationship with the guy and he, he uh, his girlfriend and the, the team, they were optic nerve that were doing this thing. And I went over to, after a little uh, sort of a, a time, you know, I kept in touch and I went over to America where he was. I asked, could I spend a little bit of time in Canon Creations? And at Canon Creations, uh, uh, was Greg Cannon's workshop before it was closed down, before it became captivated audiences and ultimately closed down. Yeah. And, and I can't remember what year that was. It was right after college. So it was like early 90s, you know, and it was just after the Titanic uh, and Superman Reborn, like Tim Burton's Superman Reborn was on the cards. And there was lots of stuff that was going on. And I think when I went over, I met... I was really lucky. I can't. I, when I think back, I just don't understand how this happened. I mean, when I think about, you know, the, the how the stars lined up, but I managed to to, to land in this workshop uh, for work experience, effectively, with some of the uh, uh, best 
makeup artists and effects artists in the world. They were all in great canons at the time. Well, like, Miles Teeves was there. Oh, what? Uh, yeah, Steve Wang was there. Tim Gore was there. Uh, Dude. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, who else was there? Millionaire Clayboy. I can't remember what his... Um, what's his name? Uh, Brian Sipes was there. Um, you know, and, and I and I got a... I got a, a kind of a quick. I got a, a couple of days with each one of them. My 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 colleague, my business partner at the time, Mike Mesimir, sort of put me with these guys, and in particular, he put me with Jose Fernandez, and I spent like a, oh, a, a days with him. Yeah, Jose. I put he put me beside Jose Fernandez, blocking up a sculpture next to Steve Wang. Dude. Up, yeah, and so, you know, the just. The time that I had with those guys, the the brief time that I had with those guys that I was there, informed my sculpture and informed my knowledge, informed my knowledge of the business that allowed me to just really hone my skill when I came home. So for twenty years, I've taken that experience and applied it to my sculpture. And so my sculpture, while while it's not Vikings based, it's all like it's it's I, you know it's it's um. It's still yeah, I cool. want to be. I want to be Jose Fernandez. You know, yeah. I, I, I want to be that dude. I want. Uh, you know, I want him to love me. Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so it's not out there. Like, uh, but I will. I'll put it up there. I guess I'll, I'll put it up there when I when I um when I grow a pair of balls. I'm not afraid <laughs> to put a beard up there. I'm not afraid to put my makeup up there because I know my makeup is okay. Um, okay. It, 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 <laughs> Emmy nominated. Well, <laughs> okay. All right, Tom. Well, <laughs> Yeah, that is good. I, yeah. I'm not gonna, that's a, that's um, that was a, that's oh, we'll, a, that was a nice. Oh, we'll get okay. to that. <laughs> yeah, but but um, yeah, the sculpture. It's like I I I put it up soon. I guess I. That's why they I just, have Instagram stories now. You know what I mean. I I, I, I still don't know how to use Instagram. Oh, I mean, not, I don't even know how to use those stories that well. I I I just know how to post photographs. I know how to hashtag. Uh, that, that's pretty much it. And at people. <laughs> Yeah, but the Instagram stories, like I see, I follow other uh, amazing artists, and they have s stories within their stories that they put up. And I'm like, oh my god, I don't even know what this is, and I'm afraid to push a button <laughs> because I, I post something and uh, don't include somebody. There's so many people I have to include when I post a photograph. Hence the reason why the last couple of posts that I did, I put up nursery rhymes, right? <laughs> uh, uh, because I didn't want to uh, forget about anybody and when you don't include somebody they can become offended i bet you know so stories it, that's where it's at yeah it goes away in 24 hours so there's no long-term commitment either you know okay <laughs> this this is the real reason i had you on is so i could teach you to use instagram stories <laughs> <laughs> clever, clever. you know i'm i'm here to help really that's what this all boils down to <laughs> yeah <laughs> man wow. that's that's cool though see, see i don't have like artist hands they're just meerkat hands they're very small and don't really do anything <laughs> artistic <laughs> and, yeah. and so when i see anything like makeup artists or sculptors or anything i'm like you're just magicians to me it's amazing and did you did you work on star wars did i yes. read that correctly yeah dude yeah, i did well i went it, I, I went to um, Australia uh, when I was about 25, I think. Sweet. Yeah. And my main, my main, I, I had opened up a business back home in, in Ireland that wasn't doing quite well uh, with the guy that I had worked with, that I would got a bit of work experience with in, in America. So I, I'd come back to Dublin. We weren't doing too well. The guy that I was in business with, he, uh, he was in a relationship that wasn't going great, and he was back and forth to America doing both of the Vampire Slayer. Well, I was left sweeping the floor in the studio that we built. Right. <laughs> and all of my friends had 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 left to go traveling the world. So, and I was sitting there going, "What am I doing? Um, this sucks." And yeah. you know, there was the promise of work on the horizon, and it was never happening. And there was a, another guy that was working in the studios with me and I think Star Wars, the Phantom Menace had come out and, and it had, they were talking about the lightsabers. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they were talking about how, you know, nobody gets near those lightsabers. They were, 
under kept under lock and key they were kept under wraps or whatever and i was like okay i'm gonna get me one <laughs> um, <laughs> You're like challenge um, accepted <laughs> yeah challenge accepted and so so you know i remember i went over to australia not with the idea of traveling but just solely with the idea of working on star wars yeah and uh like you know i guess and i'm kind of proud of my achievement i suppose because good Getting over there was one thing, right? So there's getting the visas to get over there, getting a year's visa, and then yeah. finding out where Star Wars was being shot. So I remember when I got over there first, I landed in Australia in Bondi, where my friend was, kind of a party town. It's an amazing place. I don't know if you've ever been, but it's a fantastic – Australia is – I can't – my memories of Australia are so vivid oh, and, man. And, and beautiful. Uh, amazing place, amazing town, amazing people. And – uh, I went in, I, I landed there not knowing anybody. I landed with my makeup kit uh, and um, I opened up the phone book and started ringing people uh, to see who's working on Star Wars and who knows what. I got a tip from somebody. I don't know where the hell I got a tip from, but I got a tip <laughs> from somebody that they knew a guy, they knew a doctor in, uh, I don't know if you know Australia at all, but on the... Um, the east coast of Australia, where Sydney is, as you travel northwards towards the Gold Coast, there's various towns on the on the uh, on the east side, and one of them is is a, a place called Byron Bay, and um, it's a it's a hippie spot, you know. Sweet. When I say it's 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 north of Sydney, it's north of a bit. It's 24 hours north of Sydney on a bus, cool. you know. It's a place where you, yeah, so it's, it's really far away. So, and I heard there was a. I know. I heard that there was a doctor in Byron Bay. Now I didn't know at, at the time where Byron Bay was. Not that I traveled there on a diet. I mean, I did eventually. <laughs> but uh, I called a doctor on the phone in a practice because I had heard amazing. that this doctor knows somebody that works in the studios in Star Wars. So I called up and I asked him, did he know who that person was? And could he recommend me or point me in the right direction and he was really receptive and it was really nice and and, oh, and he sweet. did and so you know i made a couple more phone calls and i don't know how but i ended up i didn't i, I sent it up i sent out my my portfolio at the time the stuff that i had i had um all the stuff that i'd done back home in in ireland and, and you know i just cast the line if you like so i kind of i actively pursued a way of trying to get into star wars and it, i didn't I, I, nothing landed uh initially but i had made a start you know i had i had i i had a direction right and so what as as i kind of i guess the weeks went on a new star was coming in i because I, you know, there's only a couple of, of 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 studios around uh and i knew that they were all going to be working on Star Wars. I, I got my my the collection of photographs that i had collected or that i was using to sell my ass to you know yeah and and the uh, what I remember being back home uh, or being back home in Dublin, people would send me their CVs, you know, and I had hundreds of CVs that I was just stick in a drawer and we had a drawer called CVs. And I, <laughs> it was a, it, when I was going to look for somebody for a job, it was a lucky guess. You run your finger around the spine of whatever it was and you pick out a piece of paper and you hope to Christ that, because you know, it was hundreds of them. Yeah. And you hope to Christ that, that one of them is, is, is going to be good. And I knew that was going to be the case with, with me and CV and work. So if I, piece a few pieces of paper they just get put in a file that nobody's going to stick up on the shelf and go wow look at his work right so i got the biggest i found the the, the i found a uh a kind of a folder i'm looking at it now i still have it i kept it hey. um, i got a few of them and at the back the spine the ring binding bit is is a big red spine you can't put it away anywhere you can't tuck it into anything you can't slide it into a drawer the spine always has to face out and ah, stand you know, out. Yeah. So if you put it in a drawer in a file, you're always going to, you're always going to see it, you know? Smart. So I sent out about 10 of them and, um, every single one of them, I got a call from everybody, everybody that I sent, they sent that I sent the, the portfolio to. And, and one of them was a place called studio kite Ooh. and studio kite was in Fox studios where they were, going into to to film star wars and so what i did was i got into F fox studios i got my pass because i was working in uh studio kite uh, and they did uh, various effects they did stuff for the olympics and they made bits and pieces 
you know, the idea was that if you were in the compound when Star Wars came in and you had your pass, all I then had to do was go from, from department to department asking for that job. Right. And that's what happened. And that's how I got the job. As soon as I was already in there when Star Wars got in via the, 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 the contacts in the portfolio and, 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 and people that I had spoken to. And, and so as soon as I got in, I had, I, I, uh, I met, uh, a model maker that I had sent my portfolio to who had, um, uh, uh, who had, who knew of me because I met, I knew him cause I, uh, from having lunch and, you know, going to the canteen in, in studio in Fox studios was, was a real nice place. Everybody sort of congeal, not congeal, but congregated in the same sort of area. And he had, he'd got my, my folder and he brought it over to me and, and, and he said, this is you. And I was like, yeah, it is. And and so he said, look, there's a guy up there who needs a sculptor for the next couple of weeks. And he said, I've given you his name. You know, do you want to go up and have a chat with him? And he, and if I remember correctly, when I went up to the guy, his name is Lee. I don't know if he's still alive or not, but he, um, grumpy bastard. <laughs> and, um, I said, uh, I said, I, I showed him my, my work and he goes, um, and he said, he said, can you, can you sculpt? And I, I, I showed him some clay sculpture and he goes, yeah, this work is subtractive. This isn't, it's not, out of, it's not you're not good enough. Oh no. And he gave it back to me and I went, oh, shit. And it was that yep. moment when you go, fuck, you need to get this job. Yeah. You, this is it. I said, no, Lee, this is it. No, no, Lee, look, I can do this job. Trust me. Just, just give me a chance. I can tell you, I can do what you're asking me to do. And again, and he looked at me up and down and, you know, again, one of these grumpy you know, hard ass Australians, you, yeah. know, real, you know, like, um, crocodile did the kind of, <laughs> right. kind of fellas, you know, real tough bastard. And, uh, he said, okay, come back here on Monday morning. And, uh, and that's how it started. I, 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 I got the gig and I started sculpting the sets. And it, I mean, I wasn't in the makeup department. I had spoken to a, a woman called Leslie Vanderbilt and she had her, she had her team in place. I tried to get Onto the, I nearly got onto the prosthetics department. Ooh. There was a guy, yeah. There was a guy called um, uh, uh, what was his name? I can't remember what his name is now. It, but I, I try. I, I think I, I got a shot to get into the prosthetics department for Attack of the Clones because it was Attack of the Clones that was being being filmed. Yeah. And the funny thing is, you know. I, I, I had got the gig. I remember I went in there and I, I got the gig because I showed them my work and they I could sculpt and I could draw. And, you know, I was just, I was going to be like a little lackey uh, by all account. <laughs> but it was before George Lucas and Rick McCallum had arrived. Right, because the pre-production so, phase. Yeah, 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 it was pre-production phase. So, and there was a couple of months of it, you know. Yeah, I bet. And uh, I thought, you know what? Yes, I've got it. I've got this gig. I think they were going to have me puppeteer... Ooh, that's cool. Something. Yeah, I know. It's like I it was like they were talking about Yoda, you know. And oh, I remember like they were talking about Jar Jar Binks and shit like that. And I was like, "On fuck, are you guys?" And the beautiful thing about Australia is that everybody, th- th- those guys, don't have this kind of classist. Uh, I, at least my experience of it was that they didn't have this. That there's no classist idea. There's no snobbery behind uh, their motivations. If you say you can do the job, they'll give you a shot and you, 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 you know, you get the shot and you better do it. Sure. Because if you, if you fuck it up, you then they'll never get you back, but they give you a shot and it's brilliant that way. That's cool. Yeah. And so I was going to puppeteer something or I was going to make something or run some film. I don't know what I was going to do, but I was going to do something. And then like a cruel twist of fate. Um, cause I was already sculpting the sets at this stage. I was on the job. Um, like a cruel twist of fate, uh, like you know, you know, life imitating art. Rick McCallum arrived over before George Lucas. Uh, like Darth Vader arriving on the Death Star before the <laughs> em- in Return of the Jedi. I'm not joking you. It was like that, and all of a sudden, you know, everybody was on their toes. Rick McCallum had arrived. He was looking at the work. He was inspecting the build. He was making sure that the Emperor was happy. And if you had any problems, you're going to have to answer to the Emperor. Sure. You know, I'm not. It was like honestly, that's what it was like. It was like, oh shit, Rick McCallum's here. Rick McCallum's here. I was like, I don't, we're going. Who the fuck is this? Darth Vader? Yeah, this is so it. anyway, yeah, he sets up the workshop. He sets up. You know, he was setting up the. Uh, 
Jack, the, I think it was called Jack Productions, which is the production house, which is just down for us, down from where we were. Mm-hmm. So he's setting up that production office. He was, you know, they were getting ready to start principal photography. And then, you know, a couple of weeks after he got here, George Lucas arrived to inspect what was going on. And then, then you know, shit really amped up. Yeah, I bet. And, uh, yeah, he turned up in the prosthetics department and he axed everything. Like, everything was going to be, he just CGI'd everything. That's when Yoda became a CGI right. thing. Right. Everything was gone. And I was, and so the, the work that I had been promised or the work that I was going to be in for was gone, you know, oh, so it no. disappeared. It was like, you know, poof, like in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, up in a puff of smoke. I was like, oh shit. So then when I had to go around this, I had to, uh, I had to keep, I had to try and keep working in, um, Studio Kite and bouncing back to, uh, Star Wars. I had a couple of months on the set and I, you know, managed to keep blagging the work and, uh, I got lucky. I did a couple of days on in the cantina scene uh, when Ben Kenobi chops the. Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah, so I was there in that scene, and I was taking care of some pull-on masks, and you know, I, I was a, I, I, I had a good old a good old run of it, and um, yeah, I was really lucky. I I um, I don't want to say it out loud because I don't know what the policy is now with star Wars and, and George Lucas and, and, uh, and, and all that. But I, what I set out to do initially, I achieved it. Right. And so I, I came home with proof that, that, you know, anything is possible. Yeah. I did it. Dude. And you went like halfway across the world to do it. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I have a, I have this thing. I have this thing that uh, when I was very young and, and I was watching people like Rick Baker, my, my dad's a mechanical engineer mm-hmm. and I would go and I would, I would ask my dad for advice. And my, I guess my, my, my mom and my dad were, were strong influences in, in how I go about achieving my particular tasks. And my dad used to, tell me to because i was trying to build stuff and i'd ask him to almost do it for me and he'd say no yeah gotta do it yourself i I'd, I'd drive him nuts but uh, i think one of the things that uh, i used to harbor a voice in my head that i used to harbor when trying to achieve something that seemed otherwise impossible particularly given this circumstance that i was in ireland which is in the you know which is the it's like the, the southwest coast of europe it, it, it's 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 we're, we're a tiny island right off the yeah, we're off the west coast of Europe, northwest coast of Europe, and effectively we're in the boonies. You're right, um, for sure. You're looking at you're looking at people like Rick Baker and Stan Winston and and, and Dick Smith at the time, and, and one of the things that I used to keep in my head was if they can do it, I can do it. There's nothing on the planet that they have access to that I, in some form or another, can't get access to, and so that mantra I kind of keep with me and have kept with me since I was a boy um, that nothing, really nothing is impossible. I mean, if you think of the pyramids, no matter what your position is in the pyramids, whether aliens did it or whether an ancient civilization did it. They're there. It was done. <laughs> they're, they're there. Yeah, they are there. So yeah, somebody I did agree. it. Something did it. So it's possible. It's just a question of what your version of possible is. That's you true. Uh, uh, and so, when when I was told that about the the lightsabers, for example, <laughs> like, you, can't get them, you know, I just thought, "Fuck you!" <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, maybe you <laughs> can't. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you can't, buddy. But watch this. Yeah. So, uh, and so you know, and 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 I guess again, it's another reason why I think I'm I'm successful here. Uh, you know, again with the tutelage of my folks and the pe- people that have been around me and that, that, I've, that I've learned from my, uh, you know, learning from my mom and dad, I think w- it, it, if you, you bear in mind, um, it, this, like, if people like Rick Baker and Dick Smith can, can do, uh, can make monsters, uh, then so can we, you know, yeah, you're right. You're right. So yeah, uh, so cool. 
Do you yeah, yeah. I didn't know any of that. Dude. Yeah. Well, so 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 that's that's my Star Wars story, you know? And 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 what what the thing about it is I I I it was amazing, amazing experience, amazing experience. Um, I am so good at it. It was a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I remember after seeing the Phantom Menace thinking, okay, okay, he's got another shot. This has got to get better. <laughs> oh, no. and Jesus, it just got worse. And I was like, what's going on? Oh, no. um, and I had a choice. I remember I could get it. I could have gone over to Weta to Lord of the Rings. And I, I, I didn't. I stayed and did Star Wars. And I could have stayed on to do The Matrix, but uh, George Lucas had uh, hired or had booked out Fox Studios for three or four months or five months or something like that. Mm-hmm. So nobody else could come in because I think all his gear was there. And uh, so Matrix was waiting to come in and use Fox Studios. But at that time, my travel visa was running out. And I had been I had been offered to I've been offered sponsorship there, but um. I didn't take it. I wanted at, at that point. I think I wanted to travel and see Southeast Asia and you know uh, drink snake's blood. Yeah. So did you? Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just throw um, that one down and not expect me to pick it up. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> but uh, no, I, 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 yeah, I can't imagine it. I can't imagine it being pleasant at all. And <laughs> so I, I, you know, it's what I'd seen the beach, and you know, the beach was kind of cult movie at that stage and oh yeah i wanted to experience a little bit of what that was so i off i went but you know that's my star wars story yeah i did i worked on star wars um and uh that's pretty good yeah. that's pretty yeah, it was, good it was great i thought maybe i'd get to work on these next ones but uh you know i there's still time i don't know <laughs> yeah, I mean, well no i think i think they, they finished they so they oh, did they did finish uh the the, this particular phase that they've done, but there's a, uh, I mean, there's rumors going around that there might be some shows that they're doing that are Star Wars around like, uh, Pinewood right, yeah. areas. So, I mean, yeah. I'll put in a good word for you. Thanks very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have brushes. I'll travel as well, you know? <laughs> yeah, perfect. You know, <laughs> you, you've got your kit yeah. already. What What's, what's in a makeup kit? What's, what's your tool bag? Um, It depends on what, it depends on which makeup kit that I'm using, but uh, in my tool bag, I have, um, I have. If I'm on Vikings, for example, my tool, my tool bag is 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 pretty straightforward. I have, I I consolidate every product I can get my hands on. I put it into a, a, a palette. Oh, smart! So I, yeah, so I, I have a range of concealers or foundations that range from very very pale to black. Um. So that yeah, and it's a of a particular heavy base. I have a range of uh, I have um, God, I have every remover and solvent uh, that you can purchase on the market in spray form and in dropper form. In case I have to, in case I need to, uh, um, it, it d- depends on the application, but uh, I might need to have an aerosol version of the the liquid. Sure. I have my brushes, a selection of. I have alcohol pads. I have a blowtorch. I have. Oh, uh, sweet. <laughs> I have. T- it makes me feel a little bit like Kylo Ren. It's kind of real. <laughs> right. You pull the trigger and go. <laughs> <laughs> One of these oh, things is not like the other. <laughs> oh, it's an absolute health hazard on set. You know, I'm surprised the health and safety guy let me let me let me carry it. But uh, and then I have what these things. I have these Italian tongs, which are like uh, aggressive-looking chopsticks. Oh. And they're black. Yeah, it's for tying beards. You see, oh. you can't carry. Yeah, you, you. It's for creating. Like sometimes you use, you're sticking on a beard. The the, the hair is fake, and uh, it's straight or it gets limp. The, the, it's it in Dublin. It's humid all year round. It's ninety ninety percent humidity. It's either damp. It's, the humidity is that it's called damp here, uh-huh. and in the summertime, it's just hot and wet. <laughs> I so, know the feeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you would, yeah. So, like, when you tong a beard, when you put a beard on somebody's face, as soon as they have a hot cup of coffee, you could spend, like, maybe 45 minutes tonguing this beautiful moustache and, and making it look real and gorgeous and flamboyant. And then somebody has a hot cup of tea, and it looks like a wet cat. Or, <laughs> you know, like a, a rodent has died on their top lip, and you're like, yeah. oh, Jesus. Like, no oh, more tea. <laughs> yeah, no more tea, you know. So, so you carry around lethal looking instruments to uh 
apply uh you know the deftest touch to the to the to somebody's you know face rot <laughs> yeah the little <laughs> hamster <laughs> so yeah and then you know within that i've got things like uh, i've got i carry uh, tweezers tooth floss uh pencil pairs earbuds earplugs um i've got um i've got a huge selection of of uh uh grease paints uh, grease paint colors i've got scissors um uh disposable wipes baby wipes tissues um and then uh gels of some kind i've got all sorts of gels you know in case somebody's sensitive to, to alcohol pigments oh yeah um, and I, I keep it all in a in a, in a gun bag from uh, my expedition that i've kind of uh cobbled together with molly straps oh that's to, cool yeah it is cool because i don't want to use a clear bag to look like a, a I, I you know i hate those the clear you know oh yes Oh, yes. You know, sissy looking bags. It's a man's bag because I'm a yeah, man's bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> you know? I think I saw a so, picture you posted where the bag was just like covered in blood, and I was like, that's pretty badass. It's a badass bag, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it, it's a Vikings yeah. bag, you know. Vikings <laughs> bag right there, buddy. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a it's a gun bag from Max Expedition, but I didn't know at the time. Or it's a it's a yeah it's a it's a pretty tough hard wearing bag, but I fill it with you know girly makeup yeah exactly. uh, what <laughs> vikings is not good makeup. I, I, I don't i don't do a lot of the girls on on but well, sometimes i do the girls but most of the times i do i do the the guys the tough um yeah because it's tough yeah because it's tough yeah so. <laughs> that's pretty good the dichotomy of man a blood covered yeah. badass man bag that's got girly makeup in it <laughs> yep. that's amazing there you go. yeah there's irony <laughs> it's, it's an oxymoron i believe that's right <laughs> you're like i have layers okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm deeper than an ashtray thank you that's right that's right <laughs> so yeah. how are the, so, how are those beards held on then how do you attach them uh it's they get uh, intense like this last season they, was bonkers yeah, they they uh we 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 we've we've um we've done we've uh, we've they've done a couple of ways. It depends on the it depends on the environment. It also depends on the actor as well. Um, because sure. like uh, there's a uh, we stick beards on on almost everybody at one point and using a traditional lace beard, which is something that you have to maintain. All day, it, it, and effectively, a lace beard is. I don't know if you're familiar with lace, or if you know a, a bride's veil is effectively lace. Yeah, yeah. And it's a very fine mesh, and onto that, hair is knotted individually in in a particular shape, and you then glue that on with with resin-based glues, so as not to damage the lace, so you can repeat the process daily. Oh, okay. Yeah. Smart. So, so the re- yeah, the resin-based glue isn't it is it, it's it's flexible, but not as flexible as it could be if you can imagine it's it's a bit like elmer's glue right um, which is a more refined version of it and it doesn't flex too well and it doesn't like water and it doesn't like sweat so you end up by chasing people all day that are sweating water effectively right and moving so with that with that in mind we we moved we shift, shifted gear a little bit and we started applying the hair by hand we could, it's called shingling you know, like, like like tiling a roof, laying the hair one over the other. You know, oh. consecutively. You know, fading it out to nothing. Yeah, and 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 it's glued on with uh, like um, latex-based acrylic adhesives, um, which are uh, they're medical ad- adhesives. It's like um, Prozade. Yeah, exactly, Prozade. Well, that's what a latex. Yeah, that, it's exactly what it is. So we glued on with Prozade. I know a couple but... things. <laughs> you do. <laughs> <laughs> you sure do. So we 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 glue it on with Prozade, and Prozade is Prozade is great. Mm-hmm. Prozade is fantastic, but it's not waterproof. Um, it's waterproof when you put on an appliance, but it's not waterproof when you stick on a beard. Right. Because you know it, uh, a beard is is it by its nature is is just a perforated hairball. Right. Um, so we started using Telesis. Um, oh. And Telus is silicon based, or not a silicon based, but it's, it's an adhesive for silicon appliances. They use it for gluing on toupees and stuff like that. You know, oh. but when you glue on a toupee, you're gluing on a, um, you're gluing 
two surfaces together. So it, it works, it, and it, it, you're gluing a vinyl surface to skin. With hair, you're gluing the hair individually in, into place. And the reason why we use Telesis is because it's, it's fast, it dries quickly, and it's waterproof. And once you anchor it onto the face, it's pretty bulletproof. Sure, that's uh, your hair now. <laughs> yeah, it's your hair. It's not going anywhere. And sometimes, you know, the guys, they're great guys, but they're, they're kids, they're young, they're not, they're as professional in ter- as, as, as you can possibly be in terms of they get paid, uh, you know, a reasonably tidy sum of cash, but it, they don't, they don't always behave professionally. <laughs> <laughs> you don't say. And, and sometimes they can leave the dressing room at, at 6 a.m. and and find their way to their own dressing room. They leave the makeup room. They find their way to their own dressing room and fall asleep on their face. Oh, no. <laughs> so you have to uh, you have to restart the process. And 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 so uh... gluing the hair on, gluing the beards on is is, and how I do it, is mainly subject to the level of professionalism of, that the of the actor and uh, and and also whether or not they can take the the. Uh, the, the different types of adhesive right. so so i mean that's 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 how the the, the beards evolved and y- y- like we have to age the cast in many cases so we have to put beards onto kids like kids that have no facial hair <laughs> right so well. right you know, or you know if they shave they would just look like they had finished they they just i don't know what you have over in america but 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 you know, it'd be, this is like Alexander Ludwig. If he, he shaved, he looked like he just sweat. He, he looks like he looks six. Oh yeah, six years. Oh yeah, you know? <laughs> he's actually what I thought about when you said that. <laughs> yeah. So, so to put a beard on him is a really tough little thing, and to get him to grow his own beard was tough as well because he didn't have any. Well, he didn't have a lot, and right. uh, it goes really slowly. So when you used to add his beard, it, uh, it. Um, it's a really tricky process to try and get right because if you try and add hair to somebody's face that doesn't have hair, it just looks all kind of wrong. You get into an uncanny valley kind of an area. Sure. So it's a tough. Um, it's a tough place to go. But I mean, look, I think I, I, in many cases, a lot of times, I was really happy with how Alex's beard turned out. And, and oh, it looked um, amazing. I didn't even know. Thank that you, stuff. dude. All the yeah. all the beards. That's another thing with like specifically the beards on that topic. Over the seasons, how they've evolved. Because I've noticed originally they had way more like runes and like stuff in them, but then as yeah. the seasons have gone on, they've gotten bigger and just like like uh, Floki this season had like the craziest beard ever, and it's yeah, just, it was awesome. Yeah, that was all. Yeah, see, he didn't have a beard at that point. Like, he he didn't have very. Yeah, the the beards evolved. The, the our understanding and technology evolved evolved with the beards. But yeah, Floki's beard it was has. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you very much. You know, you know, you know. It, I call uh, it like it is. Yeah. I, I, I think towards the end of it, I already got to to grips with with his beard. Um, but yeah, it was a journey with his beard, and it was a journey with the hair, trying to figure out how the hair would behave. And in many cases, Floki uh, was in really shit environments, like oh, Iceland, yeah. under waterfalls and stuff. I was like, holy Christ, hello. <laughs> how am I going to keep this dude's face on? Right. You know, and like with gale force winds as well. Like we had that thing was stuck on with gale force winds onto a, onto a, and Gustav was really good. He 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 uh, he had a little bit of stubble, which I'm really grateful for because it helps anchor the hair. Oh. But there was gale force winds where that where the, like his that thing was blowing. You know, yeah, it was. And, and and the beard the beard held. And Gustav is really respectful of of the work that you do. And he he he's, he's respectful of that. There's a whole there's a there's a there's a, a huge element of of skill sets that make up Floki apart from Gustav's contribution, which is you know about seventy percent of it. Mm-hmm. But the costume, the hair, and the the makeup, he's very much in tune with and uh, responsible for. Which I don't think he, they you know he, he gets a lot of credit for. Like I did the makeup, but Gustav, you know, he pushed it. He, he and embraced the look, um, yeah. uh, and so I, I, I guess in many ways I, there's a lot of credit for the a lot of the credit for the makeup on the show. I have to say goes to I think to to Travis 
and 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 Goose. Um, they were really into how the show looked, and the like, Travis in particular was was really invested in, in how the show looked. Um, That's cool. and it wasn't, yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't, like, you know, they don't. In many cases, when you you know actors are invested in their look, it's usually for the wrong reasons, but not in, in Travis's <laughs> case, and definitely not in Gustav's case. And Gustav um, embraced all of it, and it was a two way thing with Gustav and, and Travis, you know. Um, okay. So. And Travis went through a yeah. lot of different. From if you see him in like season one to like the end, man, his looks changed drastically. Yeah, they did. Less yeah. hair on his head, uh, more hair on his face. Tattoos. <laughs> That's a, so the tattoos. How do those work? What what is going on here? Because they they're look just, so real. They're just stickers, you know. Really? They're just stickers. Yeah. They're, they're, there's a guy called Christian Tinsley. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, he's a he's a again another amazing. Ah, uh, that guy, uh, amazing makeup artist, amazing guy. I met him on tutors briefly. Oh, you know? sweet. And yeah, he's, he's just, he's just an amazing guy. I, I, I can't speak highly enough about him. You know, um, but I ripped him off. Uh, <laughs> hey, steal from the best. You know. Well, yeah. Look, I, I, what happened was on uh, the, 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 the 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 tattoos on Vikings are directly as a result of my relationship, or not lack of relationship with Chris Tinsley. Uh, we were midway through, I think, on season two or halfway. We were at the end of season one. I can't remember what, exactly what it was, but but uh, an order fell through. I had started the process of. Uh, and I was trying to build a relationship with Christian Tinsley, you know, by ordering from, him, you know, which right. is a great way of trying to, like, if, if if further down the line I was in America, you know, with my cap in my hand begging for money, I said, hey, Christian, remember that time I spent 20 grand with you? Give me a job, you see. <laughs> yeah. um, um, but, uh, you know, so I wanted to build that relationship, and so I started to buy the tattoos. But what happened was I then painted myself into a corner because I had put the tattoos on the main cast and – um an order fell through i something happened i I can't exactly remember what happened but an order fell through and so i was forced to figure out actually how to make the tattoos myself and so oh no you know through a forensic detailed analysis of the the uh the process and with the aid of you know my trusty assistant bobby um we kind of figured out how it was done and and um we did a test and I, i i i Bob and I worked it out. I ran the tests. I got the result. And then from there, we kind of ran with the ball. Bob worked out the Photoshop stuff. I worked out the product. And then effectively, they are just the kind of, they're exactly the kind of stickers that you see in, or that you would get in a bubblegum pack as, 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 as a kid. It's just that the, the adhesives that we use and the sealers that we use to apply them are ever so slightly different to, to put up with the, with the, um, the robustness of the so the costume or the or the environment and also then you need you know the, I, and also I, I have to get I can't like we we just figured out how they were done Christian has Christian has, and I suppose this is my homage to to Christian and his yeah. work you know there's a level of 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 understanding that goes into the making these tattoos that. Christian really understands the language of form and how to wrap a flat thing around a 3D surface. And, right. you know, if you look at the tattoos of, like, say, Jason Momoa on uh, the uh, – uh, um, Like an Aquaman? Not just that, but, like, the tat- – yeah, an Aquaman. And then, like, the prison break and, and, and – yeah. uh, there was a, there's a couple of those things where he that he he was directly involved with that he his company produced tattoo, that tattoos for, and that is a really apart from actually doing the design, trying to get a flat print to wrap around a body seamlessly so it looks like it was done by the hands of a of a of a a, a, a whizzing tattoo artist is a really really tough thing to do, and he still speaks that language. And so while the tattoos themselves, the technology is. It's kind of ubiquitous now, and how they're done is—it's not too hard to find out how they're done. Um, I don't think anybody can do them like Christian Tinsley can. I don't think anybody—you know—he's—he's he's so far ahead of the game or so far ahead of the curve in a lot of the work that he does. That's probably second nature to him now. But he—the—the—the—the the, 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 the tattoos themselves, while well, the stuff that I did, we used to call them Tommy stickers. You know, um, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought it was funny. Travis used to. Travis used to. 
you know, because at the time when we figured out how to do them, it was a big hush hush secret. Like, no, don't tell anybody. Mm-hmm. And Travis would go, You just put the stickers on, Tommy, shut your mouth. <laughs> and, uh, and that's effectively what they are. They're just stickers, you know, they're just wow. stickers that they're, they're, they're decal stickers that we use, uh, that we put on the, the adhesive is prosaid. And the, the, the trick to them is finding the paper and the transfer film. And then you're away. Um, you do a bit of, you, you, you have to take, the, the, the tricky bit is, is getting the consistency of the color, getting the right design, getting the design right, and then doing it all in the right time. There's, a, there's about sizing, the relationship of size and form is all pretty crucial. And you have to understand how to print the, the tattoos in a particular way. So when they wrap around, they, they meet each other. So have you seen Contact, the film with Jodie Foster? Yes. Okay, so do you remember when that crazy dude, I think it's uh, John, John, oh, the guy who goes into space has got cancer. Uh, what's his name? Oh, the actor. Um, uh, John Hurt. John Hurt. Yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. yes. John Hurt? Yeah, so he's off. He's up in space and then he he sends Jodie Foster down the map that the Vegans have sent. And, the, and uh, they say, yeah, we can't figure it out. We're looking at all this data and this shit just doesn't correlate. And he goes, it doesn't correlate. If you think of it like a human, you have to think of it like a vegan. And then he takes the map and he wraps, he takes the data and he wraps it around and makes an icosahedron of the data. And then all of a sudden there's a nice, nice light bulb moment where he goes, oh my God. Right, you right. Have to think around the corners. And, and that effectively is what Christian Tinsley does with the tattoos and what's, it's how you have to, you have to approach the tattoo like it's a 3D image and you have to think of it in those terms. And that's how you, and to apply that to a, to a, the shape of a head, for example, or an arm yeah. on, a, on, on, on screen is, 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 is really tough. And Christian sort of has, I think has got that in the bag and he's pioneer, pioneered it. Um, and so, you, you know, while like, we're just, you know, we're just, we're, we're, we're teetering behind him in terms of those tattoos, they're ultimately his, and I can't really take credit for them, other than the fact that I embarked on that journey to try and build a relationship with him. But ultimately, I think I burnt that bridge when I, <laughs> I, when I figured out how to do it. You know? right, yeah, yeah you, so, once, you, once you've seen how the past is made, you're like, hmm, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's so, uh, crazy, yeah. because they look yeah, no. very real and aged. That's the crazy part about it all. Like you'd think with something Age. like that, it wouldn't. You could tell it is fake, but with with these, it's like they look like they've been on for a while, and like real tattoos because they fade over time. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Well, I guess we had to pay attention. The, one of the things about the tattoos was, which is great, was that within the story, there's time jumps that that aren't. There's no, but there's no footers or headers on on the the TV show itself, right? So that you don't know when there's a time jump. But if somebody's got a tattoo on, you know that there's been a been a time jump, and 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 so we had to pay attention to the age of the tattoos when they were being when they were being made. And you know, we we were trying to be as accurate as we could. I mean, ultimately, Vikings is is it it has a foothold in 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 reality, but not a terribly firm foothold in reality. And and you know, for most of the most of the the, the stuff but what we tried to employ with the ta- with the tattoos was you know they didn't use very sophisticated inks and it probably wasn't very sophisticated done but by all accounts it could have been nobody really knows sure. i mean the tattoos that you see on uh um ink and mummies and and uh you know uh you know ancient civilizations ancient papua new guinea uh, mummies they're covered in tattoos that are, are as good to they're as good now as any modern tattoo. So, yeah. you know, there's no reason to assume that the technology in making tattoos wasn't ubiquitous even then. And so the tattoos could have been great. But, like, in terms of the age of tattoos, we should go with the with the lowest common denominator and assume that the tattoos would have been made with inferior inks and thus faded over time. So, you know, they, and they, they, they work quite well, you know. They, they work quite well because, you know, when you'd compare our tattoos to real tattoos, they're, they're very different. Like, real tattoos are sharp and they stay sharp. It's only, like, the really old... When you see tattoos that were like old Vietnamese veterans and you know right, yeah. doc workers that had, that that did t- t- prison tattoos, you know, right? This was made in someone's patio. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, exactly. Those tattoos can be really faded. And I think that was the look that we were going for because I know that Travis was really into having the the look really faded, like it wasn't done with with expert hands. But um, you know, you get to a fine line when you have you get to a point when you own you can only 
make it look so faded before it starts to look like a scribble or starts to look like a stain or a piece of dirt. So there's sure. a theatrical uh, um, standpoint that you have to kind of s- s- stick your flag in and go, no, no, we can't go any further. It has to look this way. Otherwise, it's just going to look like dirt in your face, you know? It's a good point. It's a good point. So, so yeah. So the tattoos, you know, and, 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 and you know, there's a guy that are, that worked with me, Niall McFeely, he does all the artwork and, and, you know, I, I, I lean on him really heavily and I press on him really, pretty hard to, to deliver that stuff at, 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 at um, very short notice. And he does a great job of doing it, you know? Um, sure. So, and it's all done in house and it's, and it's great, you know? That's so, so cool. That's, the tattoos are, yeah, the tattoos are, 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 are a pretty good journey. I, 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 I'm sorry. I, pissed off Christian says, I know I did. I know he knows I ripped off his wife. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you're listening, Christian, I, I'm sorry, but I, I have to do it. <laughs> that's right. Imitation is the highest form of flattery, right? Yeah, that's right. Flattery. Flattery. You the know? guy's amazing. Hey, boom. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> so, so, then yeah. What do you, so the Vikings is one of those shows as well that like, I mean, it's pretty bloody, which is amazing. So what, <laughs> what are you using for blood on those sets? Because I feel like it's not going to be corn syrup because that's like sticky. Or is it? It is corn it is corn syrup. What? Yeah. yeah. You just yeah. water it down. It's it's it's, it's fructose. Oh. We use we use we can get oh, no. It's glucose. Sorry, it's glucose. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. You you guys have uh, caro syrup, which is corn syrup, which is slightly more runny. Uh, but there's a couple of ways you can make blood. You can make blood with a product called uh, inverted refiner syrup, which is golden syrup. I don't know if you're familiar with that, or you have that over in Florida or in America. Uh-huh. I don't know if you have golden golden syrup. It's it's just a very thick honey. Oh, um, it has a. It's got quite a heady taste. It's like it's like it's like a, a venison versus steak in terms of you know honey versus golden syrup. If that makes sense. Uh, you know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, like not quite molasses, but you know um, what we use. Yeah, what we use is thick like molasses, but it's crystal clear, which is glucose, and oh. we can buy that. We can buy that locally um, uh, by the ton. Oh, so, so you're gonna need we, it. <laughs> yeah. So we 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 water it down um, to a particular consistency. We add uh, um, uh, propylene glycol glycerin um, to make it not so sticky. And depending on the day that we have it, or depending on the actor or the battle, uh, we add less or more glycerin uh, depending on 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 uh what we use it for and uh and so yes it is incredibly sticky and sometimes just <laughs> if i'm feeling particular if i'm feeling particularly venomous <laughs> i'll add n- no glycerin so those those guys suffer oh, no. suffer <laughs> And I want them to suffer. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's the, a character choice. Thing, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the good thing is the particular pigments that we use, like the blood is, co- I mean, the blood is, is I, I was, I was really lucky. I, again, like Vikings has been a great journey. We, 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 we the, the blood that we use is all made in the shop and uh, it's, we've had to make it so it, you can get it off quick. Now, in most cases, blood, you can't get off quick, but, you no, know, right. bloods are getting the technology of blood is getting better and better. There's some nice ones out there, like um, uh, Smith's Smith's blood and uh, Nick Nick Dudman's pig might fly blood. But my blood is is um, is uh, my blood is, is is as good. I don't know. I I couldn't tell you if it's better because I haven't used it much other blood since I figured out how to make this stuff properly, but the particular pigment that we use, the way we use it, it comes off the skin effortlessly. So you can destroy oh, something cool. in blood. And all they have to do is have a shower or a quick wash, and then they can, they're can they ready for the next scene. And that was kind of the, 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 the reason why we went in that direction with the blood. But but a, of, a, of a given day, if I want to be particularly mean, I'll, I'll tell the boys not to add any glycerin to their stuff, and I'll make it super <laughs> sticky. You know, and I'll make sure that I sandwich the cheeks of their arse together. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, and and then send them into a wasp's nest That's for right. fun. Yeah. <laughs> it all depends on how they are in that makeup chair in the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then in Travis's case, it's like, fuck you. you yeah, exactly. It is on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I've seen like a, a behind the scenes video where you've got like a hose hooked up to it. And you're just like, yeah. That's genius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we 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 
Yeah, at the very start of the Vikings, we 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 have a you know what a garden like you, you get them in uh, garden centers like um, yeah yeah Harbor, Harbor. So you put the blood under a huge amount of pressure, and we'd stick a garden hose as opposed to a dainty little you know sprayer hose yeah. to, to this <laughs> huge to, to like like three or four liters of pressurized uh, liquid, and then you know just it's a cannon. It's a it's a blood cannon effectively, and and we just <laughs> open it up, you know. And destroy the the actors with blood. Uh, the costume department got pretty pissed off with us eventually, so we had to curtail our 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 uh, um, bloody escapades to try and sure. refine where we're destroying, where we're shooting people. But um, you know, yeah, you, you, there's we have we have really interesting ways of delivering blood now. You know, we've <laughs> used we, our our blood technology has moved on now so it's it's in we're in we're in a good place so when we come back or if we do come back our uh our um method of delivery will be slightly more refined <laughs> yeah now. i mean you're getting a lot of good practice in so that's good yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and you know the payoff has been good so yeah, yeah. So that's but so yeah there, there lies the blood that's the blood. We've, and we, we i think we've i think we 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 we've gone through easily ten thousand liters in in the first half of season five. Oh you know? my god, that's so amazing! It's, it's it's a huge amount of, of of huge amount of blood. Huge amount of blood. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And I bet it helps that it's made in home. So well done. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. It does. I I, I I'm proud to say that I didn't have to buy or, or buy away. I, there's a lot of stuff that I have to buy away from, uh, or buy outside the country. But the blood and the tattoos are all made at home. Boom. So that's a nice that's a nice little um, nod to the uh, economy. Not that anybody is saying thank you or anything like that but, you know. <laughs> that's what's like 90 percent of jobs on a set nobody even knows and then you're not nobody getting the thank you yeah. it's like <laughs> i had a buddy of mine who was a sound designer once he's like you'll only hear from somebody if something's going wrong i was like yeah, oh right. that sucks yeah but then your work funny, speaks for itself man well, thank you very much yeah i'm very proud of it, it it's funny um on vikings like i i think the entire crew on vikings are are we, we, we've learned because of television since two years, the last 10 years has just been TV. No, there's the only small movies are being made, but big, big TV. So you operate at breakneck speed, like a, and you operate like a, an army on the front line. So that that's dealing with, you know, crappy equipment and, and you have to enable um, the poor decisions of actors and directors right. um, and enable, enable them brilliantly. It's like you know, enabling an alcoholic, you know, you kind of have to, <laughs> You, right. you kind of have to, yeah. You have to enable them and and not let them fuck up. Um, and uh, um, the more the better you get at solving their problems, the more it enables them to make more problems for That's you. True. You know, so, it's like <laughs> you a, gotta find it's new ways. Yeah, it's funny, you know. <laughs> like you, you, like you, I've been at a table loads of times, and a, a, a producer or a director will have this idea, and you're like, "Oh God, that's shit! <laughs> like, are you serious?" Or an actor will come with this great idea, and you're like, "Oh no, 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 no dude, that's awful." Please don't. You can never say it though, but you know you have to do it. Right. That's my job. That's right. And you do it well, and you know it just enables them to make more mistakes. More often. <laughs> right, like, remember that crazy thing we did last season? What if we did this? And you're like, oh, no, yeah. you weren't supposed to do the last thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we got away with it because we enabled it. That's right. But, um, <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 it's bizarre. But, yeah, you know, that it's a, and then it's, a, it's thankless as well. You know? I mean, it's not thankless. It's some, the producers do come in and go, you know. Thank you. Well done. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's, but, a, uh, there's a literal thanks. Uh, yeah, every now and then. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a do or die situation over here. You know, That's it's right. it's it's really bizarre. Like d- d- being in being in Ireland again, like and, 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 you know the the it's the north northwest coast. Like there is a, I've often used this analogy, um, and it was, it's like it's I think it's Apollo thirteen. It's like the one with Tom Cruise, not Tom Cruise, but Tom Hanks. Um, Tom Hanks. Yep. Uh, and it's crisis point. It's you, you fit a square peg into a round hole moment, and that's what we have to do over here. If you imagine that scene when they, when, when, when Kevin Bacon stirs the tanks and the whole the system blows up, and then down at, at, at Mission Control they they have a sock and a toilet roll and a box of tissues, and yeah. you know they're like, oh, we got to make a filter out of this junk here. Effectively, you got to fit a square. You got to make a square, fit a square peg into a round hole, and and that's 
that's what filming Vikings is in terms of makeup and prosthetics and, and the blood <laughs> and the tattoos. It's figuring out how to fit a square peg into a round hole because there's no supply lines or the supply lines are a week away. And by, you know, TV moves so fast that a right. week away, you're, you're, a, you're, a, you're a duck in the water at that point. So you have to deal with the issue then and there. Um, and, and, you know, it, at the time it didn't seem that way, but I, I have to say that the, the producers are what, well, when I say that you're enabling the producers to fuck up more that you, you, they don't really fuck up at all. It's not them, not, our, not, not our, not our guys, but they do allow you the opportunity to, to, they afford you the opportunity to put your best work forward, you know, and they stand by you. Sure. They, I, 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 they, they, and, you know, and, and they're grateful for it. They're, they're really grateful for it, you know. Um, but they give you they, – they, 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 it's funny. It's not like – I guess I'm, what I'm trying to say is they, they, they don't throw us to the lions as such. But, you know, they know the lions are there and they allow us – they give us the weapons to deal with the lions. Yeah, it, they know you sense? can handle it. It's, yeah, yeah. They're, they're not opposed and, to throwing you out because they're like, you can – they believe in you so yeah. much. That you're, yeah, that's, <laughs> you're going that's for what I mean. that's, a, that's a better way to put it. Yes, do. <laughs> <laughs> like, they believe in you a little too much sometimes for your comfort. <laughs> yeah. Are you serious? Really? Do I have to do, I have to do this, boss? That's this right. guy's an idiot. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, Just do it, Tom. That reminds me of like, actually, piggybacking off of, uh, uh, of your Star Wars thing. So, like, George Lucas was one of those people who adopted technology as soon as possible because he just wanted yeah. to see what it can do. And there's a scene in a documentary where uh, it was episode one they were filming, The Phantom Menace, and he was just yeah. circling storyboards. He's like, this is going to be CGI, this is going to be CGI, this is going to be CGI. And you look over at the CGI guys, like John Knoll, and they just have, like, fear in their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this technology yeah. was being developed as they're making the movie. He goes, oh, you can do it. And the same thing yeah. with you, except it's like if yeah. you, the, the answer to the problem is a week away, which puts you two weeks yeah. behind on schedule. You're like, good God. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's like I'm, I'm. That's it. My career's over. I'm gonna have to go back to farming. Yeah. Which I don't you know? The... Don't do anymore. It's, we do, anyway. But uh, what do you mean? You You're know, Irish. You know. It's... Yeah. Yeah. We had a whole potatoes. Yeah. But um, I can, I can cut the sod. Yeah. You, know? you can make it look like age appropriate yeah. potatoes. You've got your kit. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> so, so you know, it's 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 it, and and I guess that's that's that's. That's TV and that's the industry. And I suppose that's why we put in those long hours. And oh, for real, you, you know, um, which I I don't think is healthy. And I'm hoping that there might be a culture of change on the horizon at some time pretty soon. But I, you know, I don't, I don't know. It's still it's it's a great job, and it beats um, you know, uh, 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 like a bad day on set is still a way better than a a good day in a department store selling lipstick and blusher to I to. Agree. Uh, yeah, you know? I totally agree. Yeah, dude. So, so your Instagram account is also really gross. So congrats. <laughs> <Is it free>? <laughs> <laughs> when you post pictures of like the seer, that's yeah. so gross. I mean, oh, that, yeah. I mean that in the most complimentary sense. Thank you, uh, thank you very much. Good Lord, it's so gross. <laughs> like, yeah. You'll post effects, and I'm like, oh my god, and like, oh, I forget her. I forget her name. It was a uh, uh, in the show. It was Bjorn's first wife gets her face all cut up. Oh, oh, oh that's Porin. gnarly. Porin. Oh, Porin. Yes. Her name is the. Uh, yeah, that was uh, Ugh. The, Ugh. the lovely Guy of Ice. Guy yes. of Ice, yeah. She's amazing, Great, yeah. but oh, what did you do to her? <laughs> well, you know, we went through it. With her, that wasn't me. That was, um, I don't know what it was about, 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 about her but, uh, new leading lady, but, but um, like, and she was, she was beautiful. Like, she, and she was lovely. A beautiful, like stunning, stunning, stunning looking actress. And um, that's why you had to do it. it yeah, it was like <laughs> the, the, the note came in that she gets battle damaged. That's right, a nice okay. way to put it. <laughs> yeah, it was like, what do you mean on her face? Like she, we, she gets her face. Like the, we, 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 we did, we did a lot of stuff to her. Like a lot of stuff. We did a lot of tests, and we, 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 we went really through the ringer. And the amazing thing about it was, Gaia was the sweetest uh, young lady. And she embraced every. She loved every stitch of what we did to her. Um, That's so every cool. stitch of it. Yeah. Um, and she wore the makeup like a trooper. Yeah. But yeah, that makeup seemed to 
took off quite well. I, I didn't think it was particularly gruesome at the time. I, I, I mean, I'm, I know it's popular now, um, uh, but at, at the time, it just seemed like a another. I think it was probably the effect of it was that it was so shocking to see a makeup like that on somebody as beautiful as she was. Sure, the dichotomy. I, of I think both that's ends. the yeah, that's the that's the impact of the makeup. It's, I don't think the makeup was particularly. Um, You're like uh, this is a Tuesday brilliant. for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, there's better, there's better makeups out there. You know, it's just that it was on her, and it was she was such a beautiful um, kid. And the producers went, they went full hog on her makeup, and and um, and uh, it 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 turned out really well. She wore it really well, you know, and she embraced it like a like um, she embraced this part of character, and she was really really into it. And, um, it came across. and, and, and yeah, yeah, it came across quite well. Um, and it, it became really popular. I, I don't know why it became really popular, but I guess it did. So I'm, I'm grateful, you know, because <laughs> it looked real. Well, I, that's why. Yeah, it was nice. But Bobby, my, Bobby McGlynn, my assistant, sculpted that up. Um, wow. We went through a, a huge uh, design process with it, though. You know, we had to. We I think we did. The guy who makes the tattoos. Uh, he also does a lot of the pre visuals for us. So we all sit down together and come up with options for the producers and so with her makeup uh, and the sun coordinator richard ryan uh we put together the um we put together the uh the the the, the selection of looks for our grand creators michael hurst and the directors to choose from and they chose i think the meanest sequence of 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 scars because it had to heal over time you see so it was the oh, first initial right. then it had to heal but it had to leave her horribly scarred um and uh and so yeah bob sculpted up the 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 sculpted the appliance and we did tests and applied it and neil did the the artwork and and again it's like like with me it like i took the accumulated work and put it together i i, I stuck it together and made it work but the guys did a lot of the did a lot, a lot of the, the the heavy lifting to make that makeup what it was sure and then guy I played it quite well so yeah you know i mean it, some of them are gross you know i i think i i i there's a little bit of me that thinks i should put more pretty stuff up there but that's no <laughs> you know? you're the head <laughs> you're the makeup guy for vikings all right pretty is not what we're <laughs> yeah. looking for <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i guess so that sounds like you guys got a lot of like uh do you guys got a lot of creative freedom when it comes to this type of oh, stuff yeah huge. yeah yeah that's yeah, great yeah. Yeah, like I said, like the the, the producers are like our, our producers. Um, uh, one of the guys, Morgan O'Sullivan and Seamus McInerney and Michael Hurst and and um, uh, Liz Gill and Brita, all those, all the, the you know the top brass. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and John Weber, the guys in Canada, like it's a co-production. But those dudes, uh, they initially they were they were all over us like flies in season one. Okay. But they very quickly step back and let us do our thing, and and um, they 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 keep letting us do our thing, and and there's a huge amount of trust I think that they've imparted to us, and and the relationship that's um, that we built with them over time uh, has allowed us that creative freedom, you know. I and mean, we still have to to to, to toe the line. Yeah, um, of course, of course. But it's, uh, it's still a show. Was, but that's cool yeah, yeah, that yeah. they let you play. They do. They give us- they do. They let us play, and 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 in many cases, we can slip looks by without having to approve them. <laughs> there you go. Uh, because well, stuff happens so fast as well. There are changes that are happening all the time that that we can't always get approval from. It's again, it's it's that, you know, that that like America or the U.S. is is uh, is in, sometimes it's eight hours behind, so we can't get approval before the deadline. So we have to either, you know, uh, shit or get off the pot, and and and. And so, in many cases, we just we take the shit and then right. make it happen. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah, yeah. But uh, um, we have a guy called uh, there's a there's a great producer Steve Wakefield, um, who's kind of the mediator and the the approval guy. He's brilliant. He's like he's he's about he's about ten foot tall and he looks like <laughs> uh, he's the most intimidating man. He's a deadly guy though, but he's he's about ten foot tall and he looks like Batman. I, I oh, swear no. to God, yeah, he's like he's like the cartoon, the Batman of the cartoon, you know. Like he <laughs> walks he in, and you wouldn't cross this guy, but he's uh, he's an amazing dude, amazing dude. Um, 
but and he's so he's, he's really really broad and he he, he storms at the corner walks at the corner pace and uh you can see him and jesus if you just put a cape on him you'd be like christ <laughs> almighty this guy is just an action hero he's an action hero he's like he, he uh, but like i he, don't he's... not want to get hit by that guy <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but he's great fun. He's great, he's great fun. You, you know, you, you have a beer with him, and he's 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 um, he's 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 just a great laugh. But he is the guy that uh, maintains the uh, or did maintain the um, the protocols and put them in place so that we followed through with them oh, to okay. to to allow the creative. He called it. You have to let creative decide. Creative being the producers in America, you have to let them decide what way we want to go. So we maintained a kind of a three day window for. A long time and then after a while i think creative being um uh uh the guys in in, in america uh, and i'm i'm not joking the 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 uh, the lead the uh, our, our our high puba the high producer yeah his name is uh steve stark <laughs> <laughs> pro tip um, don't mess with anyone yeah. last name stark just saying. Yeah, the, he's 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 the uh, he's and again he's the he's the like the the MGM big boss and he is uh, again like this one of the sweetest dudes uh, see, right? that that you could meet like these guys are heavy heavy TV hitters you know like you know yeah. the kind of if you, if when you when, if, if you find yourself in a room full of producers and you 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 think of the term swimming sharks you know th- th- these are the people that you're talking about but he is like you know. The heavyweights, and he's a. I can't tell you what a gentleman he is. Um, I can't tell you what a gentleman you know they all are. When I think about the top brass on Vikings, mm-hmm. all the producers, the writer Michael Hurst, the, the, the uh, you know, the guys that the, the, the guys that service the production, the Irish production company, the the Seamus, you know, Morgan, all those guys. Mm-hmm. They're such. Uh, they're such nice people that uh, they, they really give you the. Uh, I mean, they're your boss. I'm not trying to. Say, don't don't. I don't want to paint the wrong picture. You right. Like yeah. I wouldn't. <laughs> they're still my bosses. Um, sure. Uh, but they do give you a ton of creative freedom, and they allow you to. Um, you know, they give me the. They they put me on the world stage, and if I if I, I don't think it was for them, I I wouldn't. I, I if I was on another production, I wouldn't get the opportunity that those guys have given given us, and 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 those people are the kinds of people I think in in the business we're really lucky. We are really lucky on Vikings that those people are 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 our bosses because I've heard of other sh- other shows that have gone on in this country. Like uh, I, there's other shows that have been made in this country, like like, like Game of Thrones, for example. Mm. You know, I, I I have never worked in Game of Thrones, but I've heard horror stories about that show and. I'm not. Saying, I'm not saying the producer. I don't know. I don't know any of the producers, but I've. Like, I just remember stories. I just remember hearing stories about people talking about stuff that had happened in there, going, "Holy shit!" Yeah, they were making. We're just making you white. Uh, hearing uh, uh, some of the treading on eggshells uh, uh, yeah, that has yeah, gone <laughs> using that power status. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. Man. So we're really lucky. I mean, they're a great, great, it's a great team. Great. And that's when you get the best product too. Is like when you have enough control to let go of control and put people. You're like, this is the guy who's going to do that thing. I'm gonna let him do what he does best. Yeah. And it's yeah. like that's when you yeah. get the best product. I think. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I I agree. You know, they let the directors. Um, they give a lot of creative creative freedom to the directors as well. Michael Hurst is really good that way. So he writes the the scripts. Yes. And then, you know, uh, you don't necessarily have to stick to the scripts uh, exactly as how they're written and Michael approves that you know so I've seen him uh, kind of loosen the reins a little bit and allow the directors and the actors to to hone the dialogue to that works for them you know, but I mean ultimately, ultimately Michael is is the you know the the, the, the divine creator <laughs> yeah. but he does uh, yeah he does uh, he does allow a kind of freedom that you wouldn't ordinarily a freedom for for everybody that you wouldn't ordinarily get, I think, on another production. So, you know, yeah, we're lucky. We're lucky that way. That makes sense. That makes sense. Did mm. you, so when uh, uh, when you're doing, like, Ivar's sacrifices stuff, especially for, yeah. like, the promos for this season, when he's got, like, the weird, like, crown thing and he's just looking all oh, yeah. crazy, was that you? Yeah. Yeah, there was, yeah. Dude. Yeah, no, well, like, when I say it was me, the, 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 um, we, got the, we got a note that, uh, rather, uh, in the script, 
this is classic Michael Hurst. <laughs> <laughs> so in the script, there, there, and you didn't see this in the, you didn't see this in the edit, um, but in the script, there's a scene prior to the sacrifice where where Freitas, his girlfriend, is painting him like a god. So he, she is painting, she painted him, she did the makeup oh. on both of them, and she was to paint him like a god. Right. And that was the that was the outline. And Kieran Donnelly, the director of the first, the first, it was split up into two. The big, you saw the beginning of the sacrifice at the end of episode. I think it was five thirteen, and then five fourteen. You saw the end of the sacrifice at the beginning of the episode. So, and there was two different two different directors uh, for 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 that that uh, five thirteen five fourteen playoff, and uh, so. Um, in the, the 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 scene that Kieran had, we had to do tons of tests. Like, what the fuck does a god look like? You know, what <laughs> does a god? Look like? And then, what does a Viking interpretation of a god look like? You know, and then well, not just that though, but what what does a god? What does a Viking use to paint a god? Like, that's what, true. Like, did it, you know, there's no makeup. There's, yeah, there's no not like paint in our sense. There's no, yeah, there's no paint. There's no nothing. So it was like it was like uh, we had to. So you had to, we had to come up with tons and tons of concepts of what that was, and then we had to do tests, and you know, um, it was all. And no, there was very little direction. Sometimes you you kind of giving the creative freedom to do stuff is good in one sense that it, it that everybody wants that creative freedom, but then sure. other times what you end up by doing is just presenting endless options to somebody who just. <laughs> doesn't doesn't want it. Like, you gotta make a choice sometime, dude. You know, I know you don't like it, but I don't like it either. But I don't know what a god looks like, and I don't know what a Viking interpretation of a god is. So I, you gotta pick one. Sure. Um, we gotta do so something. When, yeah. So I, 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 you know, I trawled through images of of body paints and colors and color schemes, and you know, we we kind of had a a palette that we were able to draw from that we used for the priests and stuff like that, you know? And so I just kind of adapted a little bit to, to make it work for, for, uh, for Alex, for the, for the, for the, for the God scene. Cause again, it was, I was trying to, I remember in terms of that makeup, I remember many, many, I remember when we were, it's funny if I could segue back to, 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 to porn and that, yeah. that, that stuff. When we were doing the battle where she received the injury, I remember at the time, Travis, who was invested in the, how the show looked, turned to me and said, yeah, the war paint looks like it was done by a bloody makeup artist. <laughs> and, uh, I remember going, fuck, oh. he's right. <laughs> Jesus. And then that was the thing. That's one of those things when doing a show like Vikings, when the makeup looks like it was done by somebody's brush, you kind of lost it. You know, you, you, th- these guys didn't – the makeup artist, unless, unless the premise – is in place that the makeup is being done using contemporary tools. You can't make the makeup look, you can't put eyeliner on somebody and make it look like it was done by a makeup artist unless it was the geisha, you know, that do this kind of shit, you know? Right. So with, 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 uh, with Ivar and that particular look, I was conscious not to make it look like it had been done by a makeup artist. So we used clay and body paint and fucking all sorts of stuff. And, uh, kind of eventually we got to a simple kind of a black and white tone type of a thing you know we used the 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 royal colors or at least i i like to think it was royal colors to embellish what i thought freitas might have thought a god would have looked like and and then so there kind of you know that grew the 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 the, the look that he wore but like i also like a credit to alex alex played that really well you know yeah I mean, he if, did you could put a makeup like that on somebody else and they would just you would die like a duck, you know? Like, and I think a good example of that is like um, uh, Alicia, who, who, you know, Alicia didn't get a huge amount of screen time, but her makeup was was pretty extensive for that as well. She was supposed to paint it herself, the character phrase. Uh... But, you know, the makeup on her, you don't remember that so much because she wasn't, um, you it know, was she, screaming. She, she, she had to play through it, yeah. But, like, Alex had to play through that makeup and, and, and he he did. He played it like an absolute lunatic, and um, 
and 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 it appeared to have worked. I, I was really glad when that scene, when that episode, when thirteen and fourteen were gone, I was really glad that I never had to go back to that makeup until the, the promo guys came back and asked me to do it again. I was like, oh my god! And next thing you know, the posters of it are everywhere, and I was like, what? And so it, it, yeah. um, it you know, you know, and, and so some people like it, some people don't. Some people, I, I remember, uh, I was skimming through Reddit because I, I, I um, every you now and then you. Yeah, I like to do a hunt to see what the what the the real internet is thinking of makeup, and some people on Reddit <laughs> yeah. thought it was, it was it was terrible, and you know, some people thought it was great. But I guess th- them is the breaks. You, you can't. It's very hard to get it right all the time, and um, it's very hard, particularly when you have a when you have to paint somebody up like a god. Like I, I, I don't know what <laughs> what's that. Hey, I thought where it was you go? awesome. Well, thank you very I much. I dug it you. a lot, and it's even like the. Like the consistency, you know what I mean, of the like, the way you did it. <laughs> yeah. I just, I was like, oh yeah, one hundred percent believable. I'm in. I'm still in. <laughs> yeah. awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks a lot. It's that it amalgamation was, was... of everything. You know, like you said, it's yeah. Alex's performance, but it's also the look of it because the look sells the scene. I just, yeah, I it does. It. The whole thing. I think that, that was that was lit really well as well, and the the the, the way the priests came out and and um, you know, they they had set the. Uh, they lit it beautifully on the pontoon area in Kediat Village, so it it was it was a nice little scene, you know, and um, it worked for for Alex. There's some great shots. There was some real, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, poster um, poster shots in that in that uh, in that whole scene that were magic. And I and I think with the costume that like Susan O'Connor Cave was a costume designer, and she she put together a really interesting beautiful look for him and it all worked really well but i tell you the journey to that look was long and fraught with many hazards and there was many many speed bumps to get there and ultimately the look that transpired was was as a result of of um, a lot of back and forth sure. um that ultimately i i i hope worked i'm glad you liked it they you know i'm not sure if i mean it's on the posters yeah. so somebody liked yeah, it, so it's somebody, somebody <laughs> liked it. Yeah. yeah 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 you know yeah, i mean right, yeah. i mean so, you get i mean you got nominated for an emmy i mean that's pretty <laughs> cool, man. What? Yeah. What? So, what's going through your head when you? I mean, you've been working on the show for a bit, and uh, yeah. you get the call that you're nominated. You're Emmy nominated now. What? Yeah, yeah, no, that's Dude, good. Congrats. You know, that's in Thank front you of your much. name now. That's yeah, as far as I'm concerned. You know. Thanks. Yeah. How, yeah. No, it was. was it cool? it's, it's it's the nomination. I don't. Ex- I never expected to win ever. Um, the nomination is the win, and the nomination, the, the nod from the community out there, the nod from the public is, was the real bonus. It was the real, um, you, you, you're not thinking about Emmys when you're doing this stuff. You're not thinking about awards or accolades until somebody, like, and, and a lot of times that you, you're in the middle of trying to schedule your next uh, scene when the call comes in to put in the submissions, you're like, oh Jesus, <laughs> you know, what am I going to do? I pick, you pick one, you pick it. I don't, you know. Right. And, and there's a little That's bit of work. To, yeah, I know. And there's a little bit of work that you have to do to um, to submit the episode. But when yeah. you get that nod, it's it's really amazing. The feeling is, it's you huge. know, yeah, like the outside world is looking on your work and says, "Well done, buddy," yeah. and that's amazing. You know, I really appreciate that, that, um, that, uh, uh, I, 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 I appreciate the fact that they see us, you know, that alone is, 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 is the recognition is, is, is a real, uh, the real word. It's really nice recognition, thankfulness. And, and, and I'm not, I don't know, thankfulness is not the right word, but everybody knows to, for, for your work to be recognized is, is, is important. And I think that's the ultimate recognition in TV land is just, the 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 nomination or the accolade to to um, to say you know congratulations we see your work and uh, so we does think everyone that else to, to yeah to see your um yeah so it's 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 amazing it, it really is amazing I'm really grateful like and really grateful to be able to you know experience that 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 event because going to an award ceremony like that it's it, it's one step down from, or a couple of steps down from. No, it's not. It's one step down from the Oscars. You've got the Baftas, the Golden Globes, the Emmys, and you've got the Guild Awards. That's uh, right. So, Dude. you know, to to be part of that is 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 pretty Huge. special. Huge. Huge. Yeah. And you earned it. 
which is even better. Yeah, well, Dude. you know, it's uh, yeah. I'm just I saying. You, look, standing in a field in the rain at the <laughs> yeah. in the morning, you know, when you've got when you're pretty close to, uh, uh, you're like borderline hypothermia. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, it's, it's it's um it's 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 worth that that the Lemmy nod then makes all that 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 worthwhile. That's you know? right. Like, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I got. Uh, like one of the episodes, like oh, I got shingles. I got sick. I had to take off oh, work. No. For now I go so stressed. Um, and uh, like I, that particular show, that, that that particular episode that got me stressed, that I, I took photographs. I put it up on Instagram, funny enough, of the result, the beginning and the end of shingles, which was a two-week journey. Um, I got nominated for that, that award and uh, that, that, that's, that, that episode. And so, you know, that made that experience – kind of worthwhile you know yeah you you're you're you're, you're because the vikings is a tough show i i i'm not i'm not saying for a second that game of thrones isn't or the show isn't a tough show but 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 vikings is 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 physical like half the show is spent in a field you're right um, in the rain now there's, there's there isn't a lot of we don't have the same facilities over here that you would say have in in the states like you don't have the teamsters and we don't have huge winnebago's we've got like camper vans and like yeah. <laughs> uh, secondhand like ice trucks that are you know that have knocked up you know uh, mirrors and sh- you know sort of old barbers chairs for 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 chairs for the cast and you know it's the facilities are basic and so when you're in a field and most of the time it's so damp and freezing cold like nine months of the year it's pretty bad like last year we had a belter of a summer it was the hottest summer we've had since the 70s oh. um but most of the time it's damp and cold and wet and you're in a field and you your feet are wet and it's raining and you're, you're you're you know it's it's a tough show you know you don't get a lot of studio time and when you do get a studio time when you do get studio time you're really grateful for it because you're back in, a, in at least a controlled environment yeah you at but, least have uh, a roof <laughs> yeah yeah but like we shoot through wind rain uh hail thunder um gale force uh we we shoot through the whole thing. Nothing stops the show, so we never go home. We I think we've been home once for a hurricane warning. We, we wrapped early for a hurricane warning, um, but other than other than that, like we've had hurricanes blow away the cast tent, and we still kept on working. Oh man! So, so, yeah, yeah. So 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 like it's a tough show, and and everybody works really hard on it, you know. Um, so to get that nod. For the team for the work that they did um was really something special you know really yeah. something special i bet that's so cool dude yeah, and, and, and now that, you'll have that forever well yeah and i'm hoping that we do well this year i i i don't know when the nominations are but mm-hmm. we're putting for them again and so we'll see what happens but then you know if it doesn't happen it doesn't happen if it happens then great <laughs> but you guys I think make some done, good stuff yeah we've done well so far so you know, we'll see what they say. Dude, we'll see what stupid. comes up. But you stiff competition. You know, you've got Game of Thrones. Uh, you've got This Is Us, which is a great show. Um, you, you've got uh, God, you've boy, Westworld. You know, big oh, yeah. HBO. You know, so you you you're and you have Vikings. That. You know, and, and like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude. Do you do you have a favorite uh, thing you've done so far? Uh, on Vikings. Uh, on anything, but Vikings, oh, absolutely. Anything. Uh, the favorite thing that I've done so far. Because, I mean, you're an artist, so you're putting your all into everything. But is there something where you're like, you know what, this one. I like this one a lot. Oh, uh, wow. God. I ask the hard ones. You do. <laughs> you know? um, on Vikings, no, I think Vikings as a whole would probably be my favorite. But there isn't like a particular thing on Vikings that I've been most proud of. I think I've 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 achieved milestones on Vikings that I would that I haven't achieved on smaller jobs. But certainly smaller jobs that I've done, um, uh, I've worked with a great band over here called the Rubber Bandits. Um, That's a who are kind of, yeah, it's a great name. They're kind of a comedy act. Um, and I've done some great work with them that I'm very, very proud of. Um, and I've done uh, some work with a guy called Lenny Abrahamson, who's a director. He he's he did Room, I think. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, so I did a job with him many, many years ago called Adam and Paul, which was about two heroin addicts living in Dublin City, which again was one of these dark comedies. I was really proud of that. Um, but I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I, I think what I'm most proud of, if I had to, if I had to, to pick what I was most proud of, it isn't a particular piece of work. It's I'm proud of my ability to uh, get over a hump. Oh yeah, know? for sure. Um, I'm 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 proud of the the journey. You know, I think if I was to look back when I was younger, trying to sell the idea of being a makeup artist to 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 you know your, my peers and my parents and and despite. Uh, despite their support, you know, their support was given uh, it with uh, a help. With, with it was given with the with the with the backup plan, you know, just in case it didn't work. Right. That I had to, to go to. And so they were like, Geez, "Okay, let's help them out." But if it doesn't work, we got to have a backup plan for this kid. Right. So there was, you know, it's kind of like, you know, proving that I could I could do it, proving that I could I could I could do the job has has been, I suppose, my most my, my 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 proudest thing my makeups um there's been there's been there's been so many of them i know uh, <laughs> but yeah I, I guess you know i'm a problem solver i think i like to believe i'm a problem solver more than i am a makeup artist now and i think that the pro- solving the problems is 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 what i'm really proud of and solving the problems in terms of the prosthetics the makeups the the design the the tattoos the 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 show itself, getting from getting from the start of the job in March to the end of the job in January of the following year, Jeez. you know, is is a, a Herculean task. Yeah, um, it's like sometimes it can feel like a prison sentence, but <laughs> it, I bet. getting through it is is amazing, you know. And and, and I've been good. Like I've been, I've done tutors. I've done. Uh, I think called Titanic Blood and Steel, which was an, another one of those big, long, epic, you know, ten-part series. It was a. Then we did Camelot, which was a turkey that went nowhere, but it was like a. <laughs> again, it was it was another. You know, it was a really long, episodic television show, and then we came out of uh, Vikings, and Vikings went from ten episodes to twenty episodes, mm-hmm. um, back-to-back stuff, and you know, I, I, you know, it's it's hard to pick one, any one thing. But I think, yeah, getting over the humps and solving the problems is something that I'm really proud of, and I'm really proud of the team that I've had. I've had my my makeup team, uh, Katie Derwin. She's my key. Uh, she's been with me for ten years. That woman, I couldn't tie my shoelaces without her. <laughs> um, and Kira Scannell, who you know, and Catherine Fox, and you know, uh, Catherine Biggs. All of them. They they they. There's such a strong bunch of girls that have come such a long way that uh, I, I guess I'm proud of and most grateful of 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 my journey through them. You know, does that make sense? That sounds like no. That makes total sense. That's I mean, yeah. it might have been the best answer possible, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's yeah. good. That's good, and that's it's also super inspiring. To anyone who like has gone for it and like to believe in themselves and go for it. So on that, do you have any advice for somebody who like wants to get in and do what you're doing? Oh, um, yeah, uh, yeah. I guess just 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 do it. You don't need anybody's permission, you know. Um, oh, good one. Yeah, like I think a lot of people seek approval and permission to to to, to take to put one foot in front of the other and. I think it's it's important that if you really want to do this, that you don't need anybody's permission. You just have to do it. And the information is out there. You don't need college and you don't need a degree and you don't need a ton of money. You just need to think about how you're going to place one foot in front of the other and then and then attack it with with full, you know, uh, gusto. <laughs> yeah, just keep going. You're gonna, Go for it, yeah. Perseverance is is the key, you know. Um, perseverance and 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 
and practice and put yourself in tricky situations where you you're just treading water you know where you're just about you've just enough you've just enough air above your nose to breathe and that's when you know you're kind of you're cutting your teeth right and, and that's, that's important you know um I, I think in, 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 in places in like places like the UK and the US, there's far more opportunity. And if you're if you're in a place where there's opportunity, then you should you should choose carefully how you try and broach that opportunity. But but definitely you know don't give up and persevere and, and um uh yeah that is Just good keep going. that is good because yeah. that's the other thing is like if you if you give up, then you're never going to make it. But if you don't yeah. and you keep going, then it's like, and learn. And like you're saying, put yourself in positions where you have to grow. Because if you yeah. make it on the other side, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger kind of stuff. Totally. And the truth of it is, you never know how close you are to the finish. You never know how close you are to getting there. So if you quit, you might just be, you might just be at the doorstep of the, of the, the next gig where the producer mm -hmm. opens the door and right. you've got like, Pirates of the Caribbean six, or you've got Star Wars, or, or, you know, the day you quit is the is 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 um, you you're know, the day your you own quit. fate. Yeah, 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 and you just never know how far along you're, you 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 could be almost there. So so don't don't ever quit. It's 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 really important, um, and and learn all you can. Um, try and you, your best um, your best. Uh, asset is is yourself and the more information you surround yourself with the better you're prepared to deal with the kind of you know problems that 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 life could present yourself but life and career could present itself to you and, and um i guess for young kids starting out it's important to to um remain humble and yes. even if you can, be re you can be really talented, but you can really piss the old guys off if you're if you're a smartass, you know, which is not the way to go. It's true. Nobody um, wants to work with a dick. Nobody wants to work with a dick, you know. Mm -hmm. Particularly, you know, like, you know, you've got to be clever um, and persevere. Um, but like, you know, this industry is only getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You know. Yeah. Um, you can work on the floor, or you can work off the floor, uh, doing digital stuff. It depends on what floats your boat, you know. Sure. Um, if you want to work, if you want to work on the floor next to the cast, then you know, choose your weapon and you know, the, uh, get choose good. your weapon wisely. <laughs> yeah, get good. Yeah, get good. Get uh, you know, you, you, people have to trust you. You know, you can't be, you can't be a a, a, a douchebag. You've got to exercise discretion. You know, exercise professionalism. If you want to work off camera in the CG world, you've got to get good at at CG stuff because the game is so um oh yes it's it's i think the, the the bar is so high you know there are excellent excellent people out there um just you know banging stuff out like it's nothing to them you know so if you want a career in this business you know persevere i agree i agree Key. yeah and you know what i just realized we've what? been talking for over two hours oh, i'm have so we? sorry oh no worries <laughs> No worries at all. I forgot. God, I have a tendency to ramble on a bit. I'm, I Dude, do apologize. Dude, this has been great for me. <laughs> I hope you've had a good time. <laughs> this is so yeah. much fun. No. I, I have, yeah. I've enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, I was not paying attention. I'm like, oh, this, this is really fun. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I've, it, it chewed up all the time. Oh, dude, I've had, <laughs> yeah. I've had a, the longest one I've ever done was almost three hours. But three, I always, what? I always try to be like respectful of people's time. I'm like it's typically an hour, and if it if it yeah. doesn't if it doesn't go well at an hour, I'm like, all right, this was cool. I uh, hope you have a good one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I know. Dude, this was um, really, really fun. Yeah. Thanks. Well, so, yeah. Likewise, it was, it was really good. Enjoyed it. Before Enjoyed I it. forget, it's a bit apprehensive, you know. Oh, yeah. stop it! <laughs> before I forget, <laughs> I have to say, uh, where can people find you online? Uh, you know, that is, I'm shit. Okay. I don't have only on, on my on my only online presence is Instagram. That's it. I had I don't have a website yet, but I will have a website. But my at the minute, the best place to get me is is um, is Instagram. Uh, right. I don't really do Facebook that much. Fair. Um, uh, and my email, I think my let me just check. My email is my email is is uh, on my Instagram. Is it? Sure. Uh, 
Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. You can check out my email. You can you can email me through via Instagram if you want to get me. Because at the minute, you know, I know you're supposed to have a website because for people to look at your work, but like my work is based on images and stuff. So like, it's pretty much can, there. Yeah. So I kind of, I ha- I, sh- I suppose I should put a website up there, but yeah, I, but just I have just, it be your Instagram. <laughs> yeah, have it be the yeah. same. <laughs> yeah, I'll get a website up there. I, I, I should have an internet presence, but I don't. But my only internet presence at the moment is is uh, my Instagram account, which is uh, Puff Jockey. Puff Jockey. Um, yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> Good yeah. stuff, dude. This was really really fun. I appreciate your time. Uh, right, thank you very much. It was great. You know, I'm really, really flattered. Oh, stop <laughs> it. And... Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it is at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites, as well as BrianBalance.com. That is balance with two L's. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. Let them know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. That's right. Just search The Interesting Podcast on TeePublic to get some sweet gear. Also, I've made a Patreon. So if you'd like to support the show and get access to other exclusive shows, you can now do that at patreon.com slash JediBrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Logan, and Victor. Your support means everything, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.